I am so happy to have with me Leon Mendonca, the winner of the Tata Steel Challengers. Congratulations. What a victory. Thank you very much, Andy. Is it the greatest victory you have had in your chess life yet? Definitely, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, considering the prestige of the event and the tradition that it has, definitely the most. We will take a look at all of your games. I can tell you what, I've been watching most of the games and it was uh, fire on the board all the time. Even when we just downloaded the games uh, from the Mega Database, there's like some beauty metals listed up <laughs> all below. So like almost yeah. every game was like something incredible and crazy happening. Yeah, yeah so uh, Leon, the stage is yours. You can choose the, shall we go in chronological yeah. order maybe? Probably that's the best idea. All right, let's do that. Yeah, yeah, Eline uh, Robas, um, I, I don't know her uh, myself, but I of course know that Rob Adris uh, was her coach for over 10 years. So oh. yeah, so he really uh, was a big part of her chess progress. And uh, yeah, she's touching the 2400 and she's mm -hmm. a strong player. But this yeah. tournament wasn't her best, but she beat Hans Niemann after <laughs> all. <laughs> yes. This is nothing to, and <laughs> most of her games were like uh, on, the, on the edge. So Definitely. it was also, yeah. So how did you prepare for uh, Elina? Um, nothing too special. I mean, uh, okay, I know she's pretty much an E4 player for most of her life yeah. and continues, uh, she still continued to be. So I uh, was, my choice was between probably like the French defense or Sicilian. Then I decided to just to keep it simple and play my main repertoire, which is a Sicilian. Mm -hmm. And although it's what she would expect, I had prepared some counter surprises against the lines she plays. So that was basically what I'd done. Mm -hmm. And so we started off as a knight off and uh, she went for the sixth bishop g5 move. Yeah, let's let's uh, go for some of the, mm. the moves. Yeah. yeah. So wait, you were uh, black, so yeah. um, control F. <laughs> 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 One of the commands I'm so proud of to learn. You, yeah. you can just, okay. uh, it's all sure. yours, so yeah. you can guide us through the mm. game. Yeah. So we went for this uh, knight off. Mm -hmm. And okay, of course, um, there are millions of moves possible here. We all yeah. know that. Yes, and indeed. She decided to go for bishop g5, which is kind of out of fashion these days, but mm. it's coming back into fashion because, okay, after, first of all, I play mostly e6, and this is what is considered to be the main line at least. Yeah. The, uh, I mean, they used to play f4, but I mean, it's already a draw pretty much. So <laughs> what? Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> if you say so, I mean, I trust you with yeah. that. <laughs> it's a well-known draw, at least. Oh, wow. Uh, I mean, of course, in that you have to memorize a lot, but sooner or later you pretty much know it. Okay. So the reason people are going for it nowadays is they're trying some uh, other stuff like Queen F3 or Queen E2. But okay, that's not the topic. Mm -hmm. But basically, that's why they're playing Bishop G5. And I'm pretty sure she might have even planned to do one of these moves. Mm -hmm. But what I had prepared for this game is to play knight bd7. And okay. I call this the, uh, it's kind of a sub gelfand variation because the gelfand mm -hmm. variation is after e6, f4, knight bd7, employed by Boris Gelfand I see. a lot in his career. So this is like the... Just one move yeah. earlier? What is the benefit of that instead of going for e6? A uh, lot of move already issues. I mean, I get confused by them myself <laughs> because it's it's really something. Yeah. And uh, main reason is that, okay, there are first of all some possibilities. She went for the most common one, f4. And the point is, I do not transpose into a girlfriend variation. I, I go, uh, I went queen c7 instead. Uh -huh. And the idea is to just keep some options of playing e5 in one move. I see. Or even just delaying it for the moment and going b5 directly. So a lot of move order stuff, and it, but that's the basic point. Mm -hmm. And clearly she did not expect it because she started thinking already over here. Uh -huh. I was very happy. I mean, I prepared. <laughs> <laughs> very good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a great achievement to get out of the opening. Yes. The number one priority. Excellent, excellent. And okay, as you can see, there are a lot of popular moves like queen f3, queen e2. And, okay, basically it's those two. Yeah, maybe we can advance uh, forward to sure. um, like when, in your opinion, where there was like a crucial moment. Maybe. Okay, sure. So she played f5 a bit strange, but uh, okay, I guess it's fine. Yeah. I played b5 because that's the usual point to get the bishop out, push the pawn. She played queen f3. I already knew like I should be completely fine over here. Yeah. And I went g6, 
which is one of the possibilities to develop the bishop. That mm -hmm. all looks intimidating to me. Mm -hmm. There's like all those white pieces, they are almost <laughs> on your side already, and mm -hmm. you're just like uh, setting everything up to row number six. So. <laughs> wow, but yeah, peace and calm. I mean, the computer, mm -hmm. uh, Guess the chess engine very often show. Mm -hmm. I saw the positions was like what is happening, mm -hmm. and then chess engine. It's all fine. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's even slightly better. Even yeah. Here. Okay. So she went a4, b4, knight c2. I'm not sure how good this is, but it's okay. One of the possibilities. Mm -hmm. I went here, here, and I decided to break open in the center. C because all my pieces were well placed. Took took. Now she on queen f2, defending the knight on d4. I castle. She castled. All normal stuff. And okay, I placed my knight on e5. Very natural as well. There were other possibilities as well, but mm -hmm. I like this one in the end. Bishop e2, rook a d8. Probably not the most accurate, but I only realized it after playing rook a d8. <laughs> <laughs> and in the end, I went knight c4, bishop c1. Now, it looks like I've done everything well, but she has also defended pretty well. So, mm -hmm. I, I was not sure how to go ahead. And here, I probably spent like 20 minutes or 25 minutes because I just couldn't understand how there couldn't be like a clear way. In the I end, see, yeah. Yeah, it was a bit difficult. But in the end, I just went knight, uh, knight db6, trying to buzz up the spawn on a4 and uh, also opening the rook's line to d4. Mm -hmm. And she took on c4, which is not the most accurate, because now I get a two bishop advantage and, uh, well, it's just much easier to play in the open position. Yeah. Especially, yeah, since it's so open, this mm. is, uh, yeah, your bishops are... Rooks almost. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe stronger. Yeah. Or maybe even stronger. <laughs> exactly. So knight g2. So I kept improving my pieces. Now this knight on b6 was doing nothing. I brought it back to f6 where it can jump to e4. <laughs> or nice spot. Create yeah. some havoc basically. Yes. And even defend my king. She went queen h4 already trying to go for the offensive. Now I played knight h5 which is not the best because okay. she could simply take the spawn on e7. <laughs> but I bluffed oh, that. Oh, yeah, that is, uh, <laughs> that looks suspicious. Yeah. yeah, but actually it was the best, but I bluffed it, and it was. <laughs> she thought it was suspicious as well. She played rook fd1. No, mm. I just defended the pawn, maybe just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a pawn hanging. I'll just yeah. uh, defend that one. Yeah, because the pressure just keeps mounting up slowly, and she can't really escape it. Yeah, and of course, uh, yeah, the knight on d4 just... Uh, mm has to stay there yeah, for now. It's a victim yeah. of attack all the time. It can't, cannot That's really do anything. That's not nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she tried to attack the spawn again, but I defended it this time. Not I see. She played bishop e3, queen e5. Basically, we were heading towards time pressure already here, but so I was just trying to not blunder anything, mm -hmm. and at the same time, not allow the pressure to go. So I just kept doing that. And sooner or later, I managed to create sufficient threats for her to try and weaken up, for her to we can opposition more, which was pretty much forced That's a to do. Very nice way of formulating it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I it's thought so, it, it's so funny that the f uh, five pawn is like just standing there forever. I mean, I took right? it now. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. No, but in hindsight, it was probably not the best idea because she started getting some annoying threats. Although it's just winning my position, but I mean, with time pressure, you don't want to face such stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, there were other possibilities which would win much easier and cleaner, mm -hmm. but I went for a slightly dubious way. <laughs> and, okay, I pushed, double attack, right? Then she went bishop h6. Now, okay, I had to find a few, couple of interest, uh, I mean, couple of accurate moves. Yeah, which true. I somehow managed to do. And she played rook h3, took, Ooh. took f6, just in time. Now my rook on d7 um, defends yeah, yeah. pawn and my king is safe. But she brought another rook. Oh. But it was not <laughs> enough because I blocked that from coming to g3. She went rook h5, but this was already desperation. I decided to just uh, cover it all up. She took an f4, but I just went back, and now it's a double attack again. My goodness. <laughs> I mean, this is the first game, and this is already like, uh, in my opinion, it's a tense uh, mm -hmm. uh, position. But you were quite calm with this, or? Yeah, kind of. I mean, okay, I knew the attack is not like theoretically sound, so I should be able to fend it off. And this was the final nail in the coffin when I managed to defend the h7 pawn with my queen. 
Yes, and that, was it, yeah. that is a very nice move, actually. Mm -hmm. And how funny that you were forking the two knights, mm -hmm. which yeah. should be able to fork themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, I wanted to ask, um, in this position, can you go two, two moves back, maybe? Mm -hmm. um, what? Uh, no, when the rook was on d7, exactly. Mm. Uh, like one move forward, actually. What? Uh, ah, okay, ah, like this, okay, sure. Yes, like so knight e6 is impossible, oh, of course it's impossible, mm -hmm. okay, never mind, I'm cutting that. <laughs> <laughs> knight e6 is going to be very difficult because it would be, check, it's an illegal move. <laughs> but if it would have worked, it would have been trouble, maybe. Yes, Okay, definitely. good, yeah. never, <laughs> yeah, a strong victory, you were uh, 40 moves and uh, you were done one of the first, I think, in, mm. in this round even. Oh, yeah. uh, I don't know about that, but it was definitely a smooth win, I think. Perfect, let's go right to the next game sure. and that is yeah against a mm -hmm. super super strong opponent I oh, mean yeah. Mark Andrea Maurizio you've played mm. against him a couple of times I guess already not really in fact only in one ah. online rapid game <laughs> all right well that uh, that is not much yet yeah. that's true so yeah he's obviously um, considered by many a uh, new French superstar mm. like he people are uh, even saying like he will reach the 2700 it's just a matter of time mm. uh, to become a super grandmaster so-called and yeah so yeah rough rough uh, opponent did mm. you did you what, what was your preparation for him um, okay I, I thought in my opinion I thought he would like to go for these complicated positions and uh, kind of sharp positions so mm -hmm. I decided to try and keep it simple and that's what I, I managed to do. I mean, he went for the Berlin, which was a oh. bit surprising, but I was happy because anyways, we get a very simple position and not too much complications. Good. But unfortunately, I couldn't avoid it during the game because, <laughs> well, it happened. <laughs> so, okay, this is one of the main lines, of course. I went here, here. H3, this was used by Richard Rapport in the candidates against uh, Fabiano. Okay. And... Okay, we were both out of book pretty much here, <laughs> but I was happy about that because it's just a game. Yeah, sure. Okay, he played knight d7, one of the common plans in this position. I played knight b3, bishop d6, knight g5. This is the point so that we can try and get get this uh, bishop. Oh, sorry, get this bishop. Mm -hmm. And it can't, can't move anywhere. He went knight f8, which is pretty smart because the knight is usually very well placed on e6 in this, in this whole structure. What a weird position already, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so I decided, well, I can wait before I chop it up. So let me just ca castle. Yeah? <laughs> let him do something about it. Yes. I mean, if he moves back, it's already too much waste of time. I can strike in the center. That would be something. nice, yes. Mm. So he decided to delay it himself and went queen e7, <laughs> which is a very interesting plan because now he doesn't want to like a short castle. He was planning to long castle. Yes. And already start attacking like this. That is an interesting plan. Yeah, you didn't expect mm. that. Yeah, yeah, very nasty, in fact. I decided to try and buzzer the spawn. Mm -hmm. Of course, he long castle. That was the idea. And now I played c3, which is very interesting. With the idea being that I want to uh, trade this bishop off. And when he brings his knight, I bring my queen so that I can hit this guy. Oh. So, for example, if he goes f6, I just take, take, and here. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's not easy to protect. If you go forward, I take. With this disastrous effect. Okay. And if you go here. Yeah, this is what I thought of. Mm -hmm. It looks very nice, yeah? But then I go here. Oh, sorry, not here. <laughs> I go queen b4. Okay. And although I'm like running into a yeah. diagonal, into the diagonal of the bishop, yeah, yeah. he can't move the knight and he can't really move the pawn yet. So. Oh, that's true. Yeah, he cannot move the Ah, oh, and mm. this is... Oh, okay. <laughs> so actually nothing changed. You're just more or less um, pinning his knight. How funny is yes. that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, basically, that is odd, yeah. yeah. Wow. I'm just planning to go here or d4 and kick the knight out and all of a sudden black is in big mm -hmm. trouble. So we both saw this line, of course, and he thought also for a long time here, but he played the move that I hoped he wouldn't, but he's strong, so he, of course he did. <laughs> 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 and that move is bishop d7. I think, from what I remember, it was the only move in the position not to be oh, worse. Wow. And the idea is, of course, that, okay, I played queen b3 in the end. There were a lot of possibilities, but I think none of them were really working too well. Here, b6. 
Yeah, and you have to, you cannot take on F7. No, that's the point. I can actually take on F7. Oh. And this is where the complications start, actually, because let's say he takes my knight, right? Ah, uh, yeah. I can't really take this rook because my knight would get trapped and I, have a, I would have less material. Oh. But the point was to attack the queen like this. And then win this rook and then I would be material. <laughs> oh, but he saw this, of course. <laughs> wow. His idea was to attack that my... That was what I thought too, yeah. Mm. In fact, a, a very strong move. And I thought about taking here. He would take my queen. Oh my god. <laughs> And it's then crazy, you take actually. on c6. Let's see, I could take both ways. Something like this. In the end, it didn't work because, well, he, he just has too much material. Some, Looks I saw some very, crazy. very, very tempting. Yeah, there were some crazy lines like this. But in the end, it was not working. Yeah. Of course, I could take with the other knight. But I saw something like this where he starts an attack. And what are my pieces doing? I don't have a queen even. <laughs> That's uh, something you shouldn't underestimate. Mm -hmm. You do not have a queen anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So... Uh, basically, this was not working. In the end, I just decided to keep it simple, bring my knight back. And he played bishop e8, which is interesting because uh, he's trying to keep the... I, I mean, um, he didn't want to exchange knights with knight e6, which was the most natural move. He wanted to be a bit more ambitious. Mm -hmm. I went back. He pushed f6 anyway. <laughs> and, okay, I played rook e1, which was slightly inaccurate. But uh, let's just get to the main point, which is he played knight e6, d4. Take. I should have probably taken CD4, but I was very happy with taking my, the knight somehow. Yeah. And take, take. And here I thought I had a great position because, okay, I'm going to develop my pieces and maybe push E5. But then he found this very strong move, bishop B4. Oh, okay. And I move my rook, right? And okay, what's the bishop doing on E4? Now he goes bishop F7. And uh, suddenly I, I don't have an easy move. <laughs> That <coughs> is tricky indeed. In the end, I just thought I was forced to go a3, and he just goes back. And he got a much better version because I wasted a, a useless move on a3. Oh. And he's attacking the pawn on uh, e4. Oops. So here I realized I should probably just start playing for a draw because I'm going to get worse otherwise. So I just took, he took back, and queen c2. I was even slightly worse at this point. Oh, wow. Oh. And he started with an attack here. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> Scary stuff. <laughs> Yeah. And something like this happened. I was forced to block. He went here. Oh, okay, no F4 mm. working. No, no. Yeah, yeah. luckily F4 is not yeah. working because his rook is hanging. Yes. So, and here I, I thought it was best to just play F4 to limit his bishop. Yes, what the heck, <laughs> yeah. And, okay, I'm worse, but I thought it was pretty defendable. Something like that. all natural stuff happened mm -hmm. here. I improved my position, he did so as well. We decided to exchange a pair of rooks because for That's me it's... helpful for you? Mm, so that I got don't, like, less chances of getting checkmated. Yes. <laughs> and the <laughs> tendency of opposite bishops is much higher to be a draw in the end game. And, okay, he, pr he improved pretty well. But I think I managed to defend pretty decently. And here he offered a draw because... Okay, now I'm even trying to attack with his pawn on g6 with rook g3. And if Oof. he has to already start defending a pawn, he, there's not much chance of creating an attack. So he offered a draw, which I accepted, of course. Yeah. Fair enough. So mm. one victory, one draw against mm. a strong opponent. You yeah. must have been quite okay at that point. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I was happy with what happened. Let's go to the next one, which is uh, the other... Uh, Superstar. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Daniel Darda, who is just like uh, also considered uh, 2,700 candidates since mm. uh, one or two years already. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, super strong player. We, mm -hmm. We've seen him in many tournaments. Mm. You, uh, you're black. You know what Daniel plays or were you just like, how, mm. well, how was your approach here? I just knew that he was a solid guy, but he plays too many openings. So I just prepared for the main ones. Mm -hmm. and. One of them appeared. We entered into a semi-slav, which I had wanted to do. And he went for this line and took on f6, which is very solid, of course. And his idea was to play queen c2, not the main move in the position, but just a sideline. Yeah. But luckily, I, has, I was kind of prepared against it, and I played the best move, which is to take. His idea is to play e3 to try and win the pawn back. I defend, and he attacks the pawn. Typical stuff. 
and the point of what I did is to play bishop b7, which is oh yeah pretty uh, unorthodox, unorthodox. But in this position, it works very well because he wins my pawn, but I get a huge development advantage. Oh my goodness! And here knight d2 is also possible, and it there are some very crazy lines, like after castles, knight c7. I have e5, something like this. There's some theory in this, <laughs> but in the end, black is fine. Goodness. Yeah, I like it. Mm. I like it. It's, but he decided, uh, unfortunately for me, go solid. Aww. Because he was not expecting this. <laughs> and he wanted to play it safe, which is understandable. All right. And so castles, he took. Yeah, good for him after all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so we had to liquidate like this, and it was a draw. I mean, I can't really press because there is nothing to press. <laughs> so draw. Take your word for this, yeah. <laughs> and it, uh, yeah, it looks... Uh, Looks like a draw to me. Mm. Good, okay. Mm. Two strong, very strong candidates to win this uh, challenger mm. you drew. Yeah. And then came your only loss, uh, right? I lost two. Ah, oh, you lost mm. even two, but yeah. the first loss. Yeah, the first loss mm. against uh, Erwin Lamy, who was actually leading uh, the table at that moment, After I think. this win, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he also, um, I, I, I met him once, I think, at the Chesapeake studio. Very, very nice uh, person mm. indeed. Oh, yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, but in fact, you, I played against him You yesterday. played against him <laughs> yesterday, exactly. I saw that uh, in the Bundesliga for yeah. a German uh, league. You mm -hmm. faced him again, yeah. but this time not a loss, instead a draw. But mm. here it was a loss. How come? Let's see. So it started off normally. I mean, okay, he plays a lot of openings. He's a well-known second as well, so oh, yeah. big theoretician. But in this game, he did not expect me, I guess, to go d4, and he decided to go for Carlsbad. And uh, I played this move queen c2 because I wanted to avoid against him this line e3, bishop f5. I see. And the point of... Earlier, this was considered to be bad because it goes into this endgame, which was considered worse for black. I mean, look at this, these pawns. Okay. But nowadays, they think it's fine for black. <laughs> of course, with the engines. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, I didn't want to go against uh, this. I didn't want to do this, basically, against such a solid guy. So I decided to avoid that line and play queen c2. He went for something like this. And the funny thing is that he had, uh, Jordan van Forest had played this exact line against him a uh -huh. few months back in the Dutch Championship. And you remembered that on the board? or I had prepared against it, ah. so I knew that game. But in that game, Jordan played bishop e2, which is very interesting. But my idea is to just go f3. And uh -huh. a typical move in this whole thing. Uh -huh. And, uh, okay, he went rook c8, which is not the main move, but he just wanted to avoid uh, what I had prepared, again, uh, prepared for him. So I went normally bishop d3. I had like other options as well, but I went bishop d3, c5, knight g2, bishop d6, all pretty straightforward stuff. Mm -hmm. And of course, I mean, with a good position also comes choices. So I had a couple of choices as well. And probably I spent a bit too much time wondering on which one to do. But in the end, I just chose a decent one, queen d2. And the point is to keep some free space for the, uh, sorry, free space for the bishop in case of c4. True, yeah. Yeah, this is always uh, something which to keep uh, in mind because I mm. saw it for some time already now and I thought like, why is mm. the bishop not gone already? <laughs> but you can always go to f5 in worst case, which is good yeah. for white after all, yeah. maybe. But in general, I wanted to avoid the c line as well of the rook. Sure. So he went a6, which is natural as well, just trying to play b5. I went through KD1, okay, also not too unusual. Mm -hmm. Played here. And, okay, I mean, I'm pretty sure I had, like, other options, millions of other options. This position is always full of them. Mm -hmm. But I decided on a simple one just to trade on um, <coughs> C5 and plonk my knight there. <laughs> and I think I'm slightly better because, okay, I'm playing against an isolated pawn. I have nice control, his pieces are passive, yeah. the usual stuff. I don't uh, dislike the position for white here mm. either, yeah. So I brought my knight back. Also typical, I mean, the knight can head to F4 and... The C line is basically useless for black because mm -hmm. there are no entry points. So he went back to try and get rid of the spin of my h4 bishop. I went knight f4, queen b6, bishop b1, all normal stuff, rook e8. b3 just covering the c4 squares, so the knight can't buzzer me there. Rook c8, king h1. I was really happy with my position. You have such a dominating <laughs> position. You can't do anything. Yes. Yeah, it looks nice. Mm. At one point, maybe even g4 or something uh, like that. Oh, you guessed it right. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. That was, I, I was not, uh, I was, in fact, not considering it at all unless, until this position when I saw, oh, it might look good. 
and I mean, okay, firm control of the center and why now, not? Now I'm questioning it out of a sudden because yeah. it was <laughs> it's a move I normally like to play too. So uh, no, yeah. in this case it works very well. Okay, <laughs> I pushed. He went knight f8 because he can't really attack me. That's the point. Yeah, and of course he cannot play uh, g5 because mm, yeah. he just take on e6 mm. and it's not a double attack after mm. all. So yeah, so he went here, and I went bishop f2. I don't know how accurate this is, but I wanted to now like uh, just put my rook and push g5 because if I push g5 directly, there was some takes and knight e4, some nonsense like this. What? <laughs> Oops. Okay. And if I take, then he takes, and okay, something like this. Yeah. It's also possible, but yeah. I, I wanted a, no. a clean attack. <laughs> yes, I gotcha. So I just went back. He went here. I mean, he can't really do much, so I pushed. Here, here, here. And here I should have been like more technical and just stopped playing oh, for a real Oh, it's so attack. difficult. I mean... I thought about this. I was seriously considering it. And just go knight g3 and, okay, the position will play itself, basically. Uh -huh. But I was too tempted for an attack and I went g5, mm -hmm. which is also decent, not bad or anything. And he went knight e4, sacrificing two pieces for the rook. Which was an okay. understandable decision, considering he was getting checkmated, but... <laughs> 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 okay, here I was getting closer to time pressure, so I was just... I think I played pretty decently, except for the fact that he had some 96 move, which was very strong here. And we both never really considered this because it was so anti-positional. Yeah. yeah, it would open even more. Mm. And yeah, yeah, this king is very vulnerable, yeah. but maybe there's not enough pieces to yeah, punish I, that. I think the point was like he's getting e5 or something like this. Yeah. And suddenly my king is going to be weak. So. Yeah. But he played more naturally, knight d7. I went queen h2. A very strong plan, actually, and I, I think I played yes. very well in this time pressure period, but let's see what happens. That is that. a super lovely plan, mm. actually, now that I'm looking at it. All went well here. I probably missed some faster win, but I, I just traded queens because... Yeah, do you know winning. what? I think I remember this position even. Oh. And I think there was a consist consideration that uh, queen h6 was a mistake. Probably. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, th that was... It looked, when I looked at this, mm. I was like, now queen h6, because it looks so clear, like, but yeah. the, this, it swaps the queens and maybe mm. your attack is going like this, so queen h4 mm. or something would have, maybe, I don't no, know. I, from what I remember, I think it was rook g h1, take, and king somewhere. Oh, I thought about this, yes. but uh, I didn't want to do this. That's that was I that, yeah, no, mm. I understand that it's a bit uh, nasty to mm. think so. about that. No, no, okay, so, yeah. I just went here, here, take, take. I mean, I thought I could just win in the end game. I have yeah, very dominating pieces. Yeah. So I played this, which I don't know how accurate it is, but I realized I couldn't defend this pawn too well, so I decided to activate my pieces <laughs> in the for the price of it. Mm -hmm. Here, here, here. All normal. And it looks like a pin, but actually I can escape. <laughs> oh, and I reached the time control. Everything is great, right? I mean, uh, pretty yeah. much technically winning position and... Time control. Yeah, four uh, nice, beautiful minor pieces mm. uh, still have very, very much radius. Mm. And here he played b4, very nice move, because he's taking control of important squares and my bishop is kind of stuck here, so I think it was a good move. Mm. Played here, 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 pushed f5. And okay, of course, I had options all along the way, but yeah. I think I played decently for a certain time, like, okay, this was fine, trying to invade on the d-file, but he uh, blocked the d7 square, I went here, he went here, and I can't really take the spawn because he kind of uh, pins yeah. it. Yeah. So, pity. But here is the critical moment because I saw that uh, rook g1 was a brilliant move. And it's a bit counterintuitive because my rook literally came from the two months, uh, two uh, moves back. Yes. But the reason it was not here was his knight was on h7, defending the g5. Oh, okay. Pawn. I could have played this and attacked the g5 pawn, provoking it to move. And then I would get this f4 square. And the worst part is that I saw this move, but then I was too tempted to win a pawn. And the way to win uh, a pawn was to play king e2. <laughs> but yeah, it happens. What can I say? <laughs> so yeah. I wanted to win this f5 pawn by moving out of the pin. Yes. He defended, 
And now the idea is to go knight e6. Ah, by the way, I couldn't go knight e6 here because he had rook c2. And I'm suddenly losing oh, a piece. Oh, yeah, that's not so good. So that's why I went king e2. So that after knight e4, knight e6, if rook c2, then I can take and defend. <laughs> so he can't win my piece like that. But what he can, what he can do is exchange rooks. Oh, no. Yeah, and then I win the spawn. And unfortunately, it isn't even winning anymore because he's exchanged rooks, which is much more useful than winning a pawn. Damn. And then we were already in time pressure again. The next set of time pressure. And uh, I don't know, somehow I lost control somewhere over here. <laughs> and next thing I realized that, okay, I thought I had things under control, but suddenly he starts bringing his king here. It's like, oh, snap. <laughs> I didn't consider this. <laughs> suddenly the king comes. And okay, I probably had a draw, but I was already panicking that I couldn't win this. And next thing I realized that it actually works, whatever uh, he did. Yeah, it this still looks interesting, but yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> I never had a chance after the king. Yeah. King, actually. Uh, how did you <laughs> feel after that then? Oh, terrible. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you were standing in a very, very good uh, position. Mm. And then, yeah. A game I should have won easily. Just <laughs> falls out of the hands. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but then there was a little football break, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> then came the first rest day, which was very useful because they organized a football match mm -hmm. and uh, I played some football with some other guys as well, the challengers and I think one or two from Prag Pragnanand also played from the <laughs> Masters. I, I don't think anybody else played <laughs> from the funny. Masters. But. And yeah, yeah Carlson was always playing yeah. back then, right? Yeah. Yes. So yeah, that's that's <laughs> over. So now mm. now it's not the same anymore. Yeah. But still, it's but he'll uh, be there the next year, I guess. Hopefully. Yeah, you think so? That I think he he said so at least. That yeah. would mean you would have to face him. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Let's look at the next game. Sure. Because now what happened is that uh, Leon pulled up his sleeves mm -hmm. and said like. I'm gonna crush. <laughs> you were, uh, yeah, you made six and a half out of seven points. I mean, no, I remember this, we, this we, didn't start here. This started, it started two hours even later. later. Okay, yeah. sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, this tournament is wrong. way too long. But there's so many games. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we had a series once last year where you got nine out of nine in mm. this tournament, which was, uh, yeah, very well received. Uh, <laughs> thank you, everybody, for watching. But yeah, mm. so it was, it kind of felt kind of like similar. It, it has mm. like some vibes like that. Mm. All right, so Harika Donavali. So, yeah, you know her uh, also quite well, I guess, and yeah. played her too, or? Not really. Oh, again, like Maurizzi, only one online rapid game. Funny, okay, yeah. But not and really. Yeah, so how did you prepare for her? Because yeah. she played first C4. Yeah, Unusual. She, first of all, she plays everything, so it was difficult <laughs> to play. Literally <laughs> everything. And okay. She knows also quite a lot, and it was That's definitely always difficult. unpleasant to play against somebody yeah. who plays everything, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, then you just go like, okay, let's go. Mm -hmm. So I decided <laughs> to just, whatever I want to do and whatever she does, I will do what I want to do. Let's, let's <laughs> it's see. the only way, instead of preparing, it's everything. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So she played C4 and I prepared B6, which is kind of, okay, not the best, but <laughs> I needed to start winning. I guess it's working, yeah. yeah. So oh, so, you, so this intention B6 was to attack or? Yeah, kind of provoke her into ah. trying to win. All right. And it worked because we were entered this line, which is kind of known. You can say known. There are couple, like hundreds of games. Yeah. Queen H4 was my point. <laughs> There's some sideline like F5, which I think you should learn. It's a great bullet weapon. Great <laughs> weapon. Something like this. And I, I even played it once or twice. What? Something like this. Yeah. You should check it out. What? Yeah. Great bullet weapon. Okay, mm -hmm. now I see Queen H4 check. It's beautiful. Yeah, something like that. Although it's plus one, <laughs> according to our silicon friend. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. All right. But my point was to just play Queen H4, G3, take on C3, and go back. Yeah, beautiful. So you mm -hmm. have a piece out while White has 100 pounds on mm -hmm. the field. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and double pawn. That's more important. Yeah. And okay, she played bishop d3, which is normal. I mean d6, knight e2, knight c6. Again, a normal plan to put the knight on a5, very typical, and try to attack it with the bishop. Funny. It's known stuff. And uh, bishop e3, knight a5. And here, she decided to play queen a4 check, which is, I thought it was a bit unusual during the game because 
I felt like white should keep the queens, mm -hmm. but she decided to keep the queens. She thought I want to escape queen trade, which was <laughs> <laughs> <She's> funny. <laughs> but I gladly agreed. And after oh, the queen swap. It. All right, well, then I'll take the queen. That's good for me. No, I think it's good for me. <laughs> exactly. Funny. And she played c5, just to avoid this bishop a6 thing. Yeah. But I thought I was in no danger because the queens are off. And I can develop normally <laughs> when knight c1 with the idea knight b3. Another time a knight on c1. <laughs> yeah. So I played uh, d5, which I think is good because now I get the c4 square. Mm -hmm. And I'm still limiting the bishops. As long as the bishops are not active yet, it's fine. True. She went rook f1, which is, I think, a good move because she's preparing to meet d4 with fe4 and also now threatening my pawn here. Ah. Kind of prophylactic. So yes, of course. So I took, took, played knight c4. I, I, I spent a long time and there were like plenty of options. I mean, this is not a usual pawn structure you have here. So, but in the end, I decided on this. She went here f6, rook b1, Oops. rook h b8, which was a bit weird. Wow. But I somehow thought that this rook was better placed <laughs> on b8. <laughs> and also, like, I can, in case my king gets attacked, I can go back. In many, many variations, I was getting yeah, attacked for yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense, I think. And also, like, a5 at some point if I wanted to play. Mm -hmm. and what would the rook and h8 be doing in any case? Yeah? Okay, all details, but not really um, too... <laughs> different. So e5, bishop g1, knight a3. This was apparently a mistake, but I don't know, somehow to me it was more, um, pretty natural because I wanted to try and trade on e4 and this knight on c4 is hanging. So I thought, let me just place it on a3 before I trade on e4. Ah, um, ah, I see, okay. She went here, I went here, she went knight a5, I traded finally, <laughs> and I went bishop c8. See, I mean, the rook on b8 pretty much helped in this whole operation, yeah? Imagine That's true, yeah. If my other rook was on h8, it would yeah, yep. <laughs> not too coordinate. Yep, yep, yep. But here she had a good opportunity to play c6, which would kind of prevent my plans. And okay, ah. it seems like a position is falling apart, but it's not. And it was a very difficult decision to make. But she played knight c4, which definitely gave me an advantage because trading knights helped me a lot. And once again... Hmm. She offered a trade and you mm. took it with uh, open hands. With a thank you, yes. Yeah. So bishop g4, which is very important because if she goes rook c1, then I go rook uh, b2, mm -hmm. and suddenly I gain oh, the seventh rank. Yeah, that's nice. So she went rook d2, but this allows bishop h3, another small uh, kind of nuance. Funny. And the point is after rook f2, I go rook b1 here. Okay, wait. And I get this kind of b-file, which was very important. And my main idea was that if she plays bishop b3 to try and trade, the whole point was to just sacrifice an exchange. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly it looks great, no? Okay. Because I get all this control on the light squares and e4 is hanging. And the rooks are useless. Where are the open files? I can't see them. <laughs> Funny. So she played rook f She saw this, of course, played rook fd2. But now I traded and went bishop g4 and I got <laughs> the the first rank and open file, basically dominating. Now it was just a matter of trying to find the right plan, which I managed to do after reaching the time control. Like, okay, I placed my pieces well first, here, here, here. Now she's completely tied down and I like have full control. <laughs> Quite so, nice, this feeling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, here I could have played g5 as well, but... Uh, I thought it's not necessary, and I found a better plan is just to create a uh, second weakness. Very good. <laughs> All principal stuff. And here, a3. Suddenly, the spawn is very annoying on a3. And rook b2, bishop a4, with the idea to play bishop d1. Ah, yeah. I traded, she checked, rook e1. Now, okay, she tried some uh, desperate measures to try and create an attack, but... Of course, it's never enough in such a position here. She came close, though, to trying and create, creating some tricks like yeah, this. Yeah, with two bishop pairs, it's <laughs> always a bit, like, tricky. Yeah. It's, uh, oh, but I can't defend that. Ah, okay. No, but I made oh. sure, like, before I played uh, rook b2 over here, I made sure that this whole thing doesn't work. <laughs> wow. No, I mean, it's pretty forced. Like, bishop g1 has the idea of rook f1, so she would play rook f1. I have to defend. Yeah. She would give a check because there's no other option. I would go back, check. <clears throat> now how does she play? She has to attack. 
Ah, bishop c5 with the idea of bishop e7, of course. I go a2, bishop e7, oh. knight e2. I had to be a bit careful because... That is so cool, okay. If I played rook b1, which was more natural, suddenly uh, takes and... Oh, nay. <laughs> Not very nice. I, if I queen, already check. Wait, was it this line? No, no, no. I don't remember what I was afraid of. Wait. <laughs> I know there's something. Yo, 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 yo. Wait, what was it? Hmm. I don't, don't remember. Huh. Was it rook takes f6 or not? Because if you could take with the bishop, I go here. There's nothing here. Yeah? For now, I cannot see it either. Definitely, it takes f6 here. What am I missing? <laughs> I feel like I'm missing something. <laughs> Maybe it is a move later or so. Hmm. There's no checkmate, right? I'm not blind, no? I. Only if the king would be one step closer. Mm, yeah. And there's no g5 check takes hmm. on h5 takes h7 goes to g6 and hmm. then it's, uh, nothing is happening. Exactly. Maybe it was working, I don't know. <laughs> but hmm. I calculated knight d2 which was much more simpler because if you now take on f6, uh, there's knight e4. Ah, yeah. That if, I also saw, yes. Hmm. If you, I go here and too many threats on the rook and here bishop, everything. So she went to g1, I played rook b1 now, rook g2, queens. But there's no checkmate, just in time. Yeah, well done for finding this. That look at the king; he <laughs> just made like a complete diagonal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is so crazy. Bishop b6, checkmate in mm. three or? Um, I don't know, but resignable. <laughs> for her. As long as there's, I'm not getting checkmated. She has to resign. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Okay, so in this case, the second victory. Yes. So now, Mr. Freulich. Yeah. Fre Freulich. Mm -hmm. So I'm just assuming Freulich is probably from the German Freulich, which means happy. <laughs> and he looks happy. So oh, yeah. I have never heard of him, but he's 2,600 almost and very mm -hmm. young too. So have you heard of him before? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he ah. was playing the same tournaments I was playing during the pandemic. Ah. But that time he was like 2470, 2480, something oh. like this. Oh, so he is also another <laughs> one of those super young, super geniuses. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, and then he played. He was so keen in playing F knight F3 mm -hmm. against you. Yeah. And you prepared something very special against him, yeah. in my opinion. Uh, yeah, kind of. I've never really played it before, but I think it's decent. Yeah. It's, uh, is this, uh, what is it called? Is it it's a hedgehog? double fianchetto. Queen's fianchetto. Double okay. fianchetto. Double because fianchetto, yes. Usually you don't double two. It, if you do it without G6, it's like a queen's Indian if you play E6. I see. And if you go only G6, it's a king's Indian. So there's no <laughs> other name but a double fianchetto. All right, yeah. okay. So it was, okay, this is known theory, but he went with queen C2, which I was not, too well versed with because it's not the main move. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's like the third most popular move. But I just remember that I have to play c5, d5, b5. And he played uh, in Benko style, except that I'm not losing a pawn. <laughs> ah, wow, okay. Well, that is okay. The pawns are pushing mm -hmm. forward. I guess that's the... Yeah. So, uh, at least they're natural yeah. moves. Yes. He defends the pawn, Very I take, natural. plays here. Now, uh, d6 was a very bad move, which I only realized later because it looks natural. Yeah, just yeah it d6. does. To get the knight out mm. and... Exactly. So what's the problem? First, I have to explain what the good move is. The good move is e6, which I also thought about. But then I said, why not d6? Yeah. <laughs> but e6 was better just to create some chaos in the center and something like this maybe. And okay, I have some kind of counterplay. Ah, oh, yeah, of course. You did. Yeah, you're thinking like, okay, why? what is about yeah. the c4 pawn? But of course... Taking that one is also uh, mm. causing trouble. I mean, probably he can, but now look at his pieces. They're not too well. I can play something like knight a6 and push d5, and all of a sudden he's kind of stuck. Oh, I thought bishop a6. How funny. Ah, bishop a6 as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, much yeah. better. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. 
I thought like I'm losing my mind now. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're doing great. You're doing better than me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, I see. So, but D6, D6. was okay. Mm. But like, w mm. let's see what what White he, played. Yeah, he played Rook E1. I played Knight B7. Yeah. Took. Yeah. Bishop A6. Pretty normal to try and get the bishop out. Yeah. And he played knight e3, which I thought was weird, but later I realized it was very, very strong because my idea is to, in fact, chop this knight off and get rid of my, sorry, my kind of useless bishop for his pretty yes, good knight. Yes, yes, yes. But he didn't allow that. <laughs> and here I started to think and I realized, wait a minute, things are not so easy. <laughs> <laughs> his plan is simply to play bishop d2, bishop c3 and maybe bring the rook or something and then push. And what, what exactly am I doing? I don't understand what I'm doing. <laughs> And I literally thought for like 20, 25 minutes, oh, maybe even 30. It dawned. Yeah, and then it dawned, oh, I'm worse. <laughs> because I, in my mind, it was just a Benko gambit Yeah. with equal pawns. Like, who would not won that? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> and Me, okay. but that's something different. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, you, were, you felt mm. safe for, and then out of a sudden, you yeah. see like, that's not good. Mm. And then I went for this ridiculous plan with pushing C4. To try and get knight c4, knight d3, but of course it didn't work out. Because unfortunately, after this, this, he gets knight d4 and knight c6, which is knight way more important. c6. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, okay. And I couldn't do anything. So I played rook here. Oh, gosh. Brought his knight. Then you, get, you have to take almost, right? Yeah, kind of. Oh, I mean, gosh. <laughs> but the problem is, even if I want to take here, yeah, even if I want to take... Like, uh, let's say I bring my bishop. Uh, let's let's imagine a scenario where I manage to take with a piece. Okay. I take back <laughs> and I have to recapture the rook or queen. Suddenly e5 comes. Like, oh, gosh. Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. I see that now. e5 and whoops. <laughs> suddenly this mm. bishop is in the game. And it never really works out, those scenarios. <laughs> so that was never an option. But then I saw this possibility to play here. And I was very happy. Until I noticed that he can take, take, and then the moment I took, I realized, oh snap, I missed b4, which is very, very strong. Because now, <laughs> once he gets something like this, I'm in a resignable position, basically. Oh. Yeah, that's what I had missed. If he doesn't have this, then. Yeah, and now I realize that, yeah, your queen is like, has very limited right now, mm. too. Yeah, that's oh, why. Oh, no. b4 is very strong, yeah. Mm, good for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what to do here. Yeah. So, I mean, if I move my queen back, as I said, he'll push. So I yeah. decided to go into a worse end game. I mean, a terrible end game. Yeah. Here, 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 all normal stuff. He took my pawn. I had to defend. He played knight c4, slightly questionable, but probably still good. Yeah. And now this was a crit. I thought that's I had some chances to try and create a fortress, yeah, because of my dark squares. Okay, yeah, but d5 is just so mm. annoying. So if I play something like this, he can even block the whole v file if he wants. Trade. I can't really win this pawn because now his this uh, pawn will yeah. just queen. So I can't do that. Yeah. And if I can't take this pawn, he'll slowly improve. And just like my pieces are so passive, there's literally no scope for them. <sighs> so I, I didn't want to defend this. In the end, I saw this nice possibility where I take this guy. With the idea being that if he takes, I go rook eight. And now this rook is not defended, and I can win the knight. And this should be a draw. Oh, I remember this position. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw this. I saw this live. Aha. <laughs> and I, I stuck to... Uh, so, e4. You take, you mm. take uh, e4. Mm -hmm. And I thought for such a long time that cannot work. <laughs> why is is this? Why? What is happening? Why is he not taking? Because he didn't take after yeah, all, right? Yeah. Like I thought for this for such a long time, and then I finally found it out. It is a tactical riddle mm. after after all, and yeah. he found it. Mm. Because uh, uh, yeah, but first I couldn't uh, find this so i probably as white i would have just taken mm -hmm. and uh, lost the game so not game. really lost i mean you're well within the drawing range but i yeah. think you can play here as well but i mm. what i so i saw something during the game where i have enough counterplay that's all i remember yeah enough counterplay to create some chances but what he did was much better but it is yeah it's absolutely crazy that mm. yeah 
I didn't see that. No, I saw it, but I went for it because it's pretty much the only option here if I don't do this. Yeah. The idea, of course, is simple, not to allow rook eight there. Yes. So if I simply move my rook, he just takes That is knight. so evil. <laughs> but my idea is to take, take, and go knight d6. And at least I'm not defending in a passive position. At least it's an active yeah. position. You went here, here. Okay, we somehow played natural moves. I was trying to keep my fortress, defend. <laughs> and he decided to trade rooks, which was slightly surprising, but turned out that it, even this was possible. And honestly, here I thought I had great drawing chances. Mm -hmm. And we did something like this. And he allowed me to push g5. And I played this because if I don't do it, then he might even want to push g5 himself. And his plan would be, let's say, if I wait, he would play f3, take, take, here, here. And the king was going through, hmm? And I, not really through, because once you play g5, you don't even need to do that. Like, where can I wait? Okay. For example, I can wait here. And he had some possibility to go for a Tsuk Tsuang. How was it? Um, ah, if I go here, then he goes a check. I go back. And then Rook D7. Sooner or later, he gets to push D6. That's <laughs> the point. So let's say I don't go Knight F5, I go Knight E8. How is he creating? I saw some way to create a Tsuk Tsuang for him over here. How is it? Um, probably he waits. Here. Check. I can't go to d8 because of rook d7. Yeah. I have to go here and then he attacks my knight. Yeah. And sooner or later, uh. just pushes. So that's how I thought allowing g5 is not good. It limits my possibilities. So over here, I push g5 myself. I was very happy the whole situation. Now, of course, if he takes on, uh, if he plays f3, okay, he did that later. Here, here, here. I have to wait. He pushed f3, of course. And he found a very good plan. Although it was not too difficult, but still. Reroots the bishop to d3, the best square. <laughs> uh, and, and you're like back and forth, back and forth, yeah, my fortress is my fortress. No <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's not a fortress. Yes, can unfortunately come. not. And I had some tricks, but unfortunately they were not enough. Like if he can't go king b6 due to knight c8, so he has to be very careful about <laughs> yeah. the whole thing. And something like this happened. And he found another plan to try and <laughs> play bishop g6 oh. to win this pawn. And yeah, basically what I did was, I did the best I could, but it was not enough. Something like this happened and, okay, he just basically just rerouted the bishop and yeah, then it was over. Oh, that was a no. tough one. Oh, yes. But the worst part is that I never even had chances for a win. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's not a nice feeling yeah. then like this. Well, But he played very well, I yeah. have to say. He found the right moves. He saw those tactics. And hmm. I think that was two to three situations where he played a very, very good move after all. So, hmm. yeah. Yeah, so now, uh, mm -hmm. what, was your, what was your thoughts about the whole tournament? Were you like, okay... <laughs> Um, I mean, first of all, did you ever have ambitions to win the yeah, tournament? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Before oh, going wow. into the tournament, I wanted to win because okay, I'm, uh, the first seed is two, rated two six nine two. I'm two six zero. That's not a huge difference, mm -hmm. and I know I'm capable of playing on on level with these guys. So wow. definitely, I thought I'm uh, one. Definitely, like just possible yeah. to win this event. So not like, now with hmm. that in your mind, and now with uh, having, I think you had now two and a half, no, uh, 50%. Yeah, 50%, enough, uh, yeah. Out of, so yeah. now you were like, well, that's probably not going to be a win anymore, mm -hmm. but uh, let's uh, end this with, uh, with the head up high <laughs> or something, or how did um, you approach the next game? I thought it was still a long way to go. I mean, we have hardly completed half the event. Not even half, actually. Okay, so you were still optimistic. Yeah. I thought wow. if I get some wins in here and there, I, I definitely have a chance. But now it's much more difficult because I've got all the difficult players towards the Exactly. End. This is another <laughs> thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah we, had, uh, um, yeah, we had a couple of players who were lower rated than you. Mm. Uh, one, two, three, four, to be precise. Mm. And now, out of a sudden, uh, we have uh, yeah, people who are, or who were at one point, even <laughs> 2,700. Yeah. At least three. Salem, Yilmaz, and Salem? Niemann were I don't think all Salem three. Were. I'm pretty sure Salem was... Uh, he was close, seven. but I never... I, I don't think he was 27. It was 20, maybe 90, not. maybe, but, oh, but yeah, definitely but, but, but strong maybe enough. Maybe touching it almost, mm. yeah. Uh, in reach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... And Korobov, of course, yeah, 2,702, Korobov. right? Korobov. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, uh, four players who are monsters. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But you were still optimistic. So, yeah. if this is a lesson for you in the tournament, uh, let this be a lesson for you. Hmm. Don't worry too much. Yes, of course. Okay, the first couple of losses, it's fine, but uh, it can still work out. Mm -hmm. Next one was uh, Boykema, another yeah. one who I haven't heard of, to be honest. He qualified for the challengers by winning the qualifiers. <laughs> Gotcha. Happens every year. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. From Belgium, actually. Okay, mm. yeah. Mm. So another Belgian player. You mm -hmm. had two Dutch, now two Belgian players. Mm -hmm. yes. And you were white. So it's your yeah. chance to strike back, probably. Exactly. How did you do that? It, it was not too hard. It was mostly difficult for him because he usually plays all kinds of funky openings. With, um, <laughs> yeah, with, I like him already. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like against D4, his main repertoire was the Dutch defense. Oh, nice. Okay. But, uh, of course, you can't really survive playing the Dutch defense in such an event. That's why he learned the <laughs> Slav <laughs> semi <-slav. laughs> Okay, gotcha. And with White, do you know what he plays? With Is White? this, like, I'm sorry, uh, you cannot survive with the Dutch no. in this... It's no. impossible. It's like everybody will, every, everyone in the challengers group will punish the Dutch. You'll definitely have to suffer. That's the, <laughs> whether, you might win, but you have to suffer if you win, <laughs> even if you win. <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I, I think I get the point, yeah. <laughs> okay. You want to you you take a guess what he plays with white as his almost main repertoire? Well, then it's F4 or what? Of course. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice job. Wow. <laughs> All right. Good, fair enough. So I thought this should be a bit easier than a usual 2400 because he has, he has to adjust to the new opening as well, which sure. is Slav, which he was playing in this event. So we played the semi-Slav and e3, knight bd7. He went for the sideline bishop e2. Mm -hmm. Quite tricky because he took on c4, very natural. He thinks, he thought at least it was the same thing as this line. So he thought it would transpose, but this is a trap kind of. And the point is to play a4, not take on c4 immediately. And okay, you play bishop d6, right? Normal. You think at some point what it'll take. The point of this is to play knight d2 and re recapture the knight. And the knight is very well placed on c4 somehow. Uh -huh. Small opening trap. I mean, not like it gives a winning advantage for it, just a slight edge. But he, okay. So he broke in the center. I took, <laughs> took, b3. I was prepared until here. And uh, Well done. He, so 10 moves at least, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, a bit more, but he deviated over here. He mm -hmm. took on d4. Against yeah. a player who's normally doing crazy stuff? Mm. Uh, not bad, okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So you take with the queen also, yeah. Mm. Yeah, you don't mm. want to go for Isolan. Yeah. yeah. He decides to exchange queens, which looks normal. But yeah. I knew this had to be slightly inaccurate because, well, it's, it, I didn't prepare against it, so definitely the engine didn't <laughs> recommend it. <laughs> as we know already, mm -hmm. I have to make this point, we're, uh, as you've probably seen already, we have this beautiful series, uh, What Does the Day of a Professional uh, Player Look Like? with Leon Mandonza. It's a five-part series. The first part already has overwhelmingly uh, received very positive uh, uh, reviews. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, the, we will get to all those things especially also how to uh, use the engine for analyzing. And this, what you just mentioned, is one part of the whole progress. Like, yeah. if it's not part of the engine, then mm -hmm. it's not part of my repertoire. End of story. <laughs> it has to be that. I'll find it over the board. I'm good enough. Yeah. So, okay, king takes d8. I played bishop a3, which is normal. Bishop e6. All this was played pretty fast, I mm -hmm. guess, by me. But here I encountered a critical moment because for me at least the most natural move is long castle. It does look interesting, but your yeah. king is everything else than safe. Yeah, I mean it'll look great because he has to go king c8, which is weird. And now I was thinking, how do I take advantage of this whole thing? Here? Yeah. Knight d6 is the most the most natural move. He takes, I take, bishop takes b3. Because okay, he's trying to win some material as well on the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't blame him, yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Maybe even the best move as well. So, And here I started to realize that, wait a minute, I don't even have a hint of an initiative. How exactly <laughs> am I going to compensate for this pawn? And I, it was very confusing because um, I know I should have an advantage, but it was not easy. And after like 20, 25 minutes, yeah. I realized, wait a minute, knight d6 exists over here as well without a check. And for some reason, this wasn't obvious to me at first. 
Oh, it's to a very block his casting yeah. delightful. Oh, uh, I mean he couldn't castle anyways, but the point was for me to keep my rook like here with uh, not yes, on D1. Yes, exactly. Okay. And let's say he has to take take and the point the difference is that okay, he took on B3 of course. The difference is that I got rook B1 now and push A5 next and the B7 pawn is weak. And ah. So let's say he goes here. That's so nice. Mm. You've been calculating so many moves in advance and so many times. My yeah, goodness. but I have to do this in order to go into the variation. Otherwise, yes. hey, sure, sure. If it doesn't work, eh, disaster. <laughs> Something like this. And I move back wherever. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's just an overwhelming initiative because yeah. I've sacrificed a pawn, but I'm going to castle next, bring my rook. And uh, yeah, you don't even need to take uh, b7 yet because uh, yeah, I can probably take yeah. it, I don't need yeah. to, whatever I want. <laughs> wow! So he didn't go into this, he went for bishop c4, which is a, actually a blunder, but he misvaluated the resulting position. Oh, because I now take on b6. Oh, of course, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> wait, and uh, yeah, he cannot take back. No, mm. no, okay, I see, I see. So he had no option, but yeah. he had to go into. So this. he cannot uh, for you at home. Um, if he takes, if you think like, well, wait a second, he can just take uh, the bishop hmm. on e two. But uh, now rook takes, and this is almost. Uh, yeah. I think it's uh, pretty much winning. For check, right. check. No, it's not checkmate. Close to check. Yeah. Sooner or later, check. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cast. I'll like bring the rook yeah. somehow. So uh, yeah, it's just the, the king is stuck. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's you don't uh, win a direct piece like this, but yeah, the the bishop cannot take on e2, so it's yeah. like... So he took here, but I, I got like a material advantage. Very nice. Played b5. Took. Ah, tricky. Okay, not tricky yes. enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, he, it looks like he has this nice pawn mass, but it can't move. That's the, the only problem. So, okay. So I went here, here, and e4. This is the main point of the position. You mean, okay, so I thought like, wait a second, it can go to b5, but that's it. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, it. Now that's it cannot it. move. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> So he went here, I pushed here, and the problem is that I gain my gain momentum on the king side with. Oh, those pawns are strong out of a sudden. Yeah. yeah. Oh, beautiful. Well, that's fun to play a game like this, oh, I yeah. guess. <laughs> Very straightforward and yeah. nothing complicated. He tried some stuff, but it was not enough. Mm. Just pushed. I allowed him to push a bit, but. My pawns had already reached pretty far ahead, yeah. so it was it's like you calculated it. It's mm. uh, non un non stoppable. Mm. Very nice. Yeah. Very mm. nice. Comeback time. <laughs> okay, so you're back on track with a victory. This was a must win. Mm. And here we go, <laughs> Mr. Anton Korobov, yeah. known to be. Uh, uh, absolutely strong, a very attacking player, oh, yes, right? Yeah, definitely. As tactical genius, yeah. and um, I always wonder, and I don't want to step on anybody's toes. How is he in front on the board? His mm -hmm. look mm -hmm. is like a bit <laughs> like, a, let's say, special. He has long hair, <laughs> right? It's curly, big and guy. He looks a bit bigger. Oh, yeah, oh, exactly. Yes. Was this? Did was he like very delightful with the pieces, <laughs> or was he like a bit more like? A, Strong uh, on the board. No, I mean, he's a nice guy. So <laughs> I kind of sure. know that he's not going to kill me or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <All right>. safe. <laughs> I might lose in the game, but I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's not like that he sits down and you go like, oh, no, this is not going to end well. I'm going to lose this because it's just like intimidating or mm. something. No. Not all right. Good. But he played white too. So yeah. ugh, double trouble. Yeah, exactly. But I was confident in my uh, lines, and he did not expect the French, I'm guessing, because he... Normally you play this uh, um, Sicilian. Yeah, the Sicilian. Yeah, so you play d6, d4, mm -hmm. uh, d5, sorry. Yeah, so now he goes knight d2, the Tarash variation. I think it's called the Tarash. Yeah. Right? And which is a bit surprising because he's more of a attacking player. Tarash is very, very solid and... Hmm. Positional, so it was kind of unexpected. What was his point score to this? Uh, was he in um, front of you or behind? He, I think or? in front by half a point. I see. So I was on hmm. four out of seven. He was probably four and a half. Yeah, no. I then so. because if, I, if maybe he just thought like she has to slow down a little. He was too aggressive, but lost mm. too many points. But no, apparently not. Mm. All right. So yeah, Tarash. So I played c5, the main line. He played here. Here, all theory. Mm -hmm. I went knight f6, which is 
he was not aware of it somehow because knight c6 is the main move. But I'm not sure because during the game I got got the impression that he was not aware of it. But later when I was analyzing this game, I saw this. I saw that he has played this himself with black. <laughs> <laughs> Very surprising. <laughs> and he was he didn't uh, play well as black. And he thought like why uh, or something. I'm not sure whether because let's see. I can find that game for you as well. Where is it? Here. Ah, uh, funny. Against Sanal in the World Cup. A classic. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I have to quickly uh, explain. This is another one of those steps which we are pointing out in the series. You just went to the online database and took the game from yeah uh, last year in mm. August uh, mm. against Sanal and Korobov lost. Yeah, <laughs> but he played this exact same line. And he played the exact same mm. line in the French as yeah. Black. Funny, yeah. very funny indeed. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. For some reason I got the impression that he was unprepared. <laughs> mm -hmm. But he played... He decided to play the same way how Sanal played because <laughs> <laughs> if he thought if it works against him, it should work against me as well. I mean, he has a point though. <laughs> yes, I think so too. But good for you then. Because yeah. you, uh, apparently you were aware of this uh, even happening already. So, um, Yeah, basically I've played h6 twice before. Mm -hmm. But I decided to deviate this time and play the more natural bishop e7. Mm -hmm. And here he played bishop d3, which is not the best. Okay. Because of, I don't know. Why it's not? your kind of a move. Oh, is it? Yes. What would I do here? Mm. Uh, uh, Go for the attack. How, uh, eh? I cannot see a real attacking move right now, to be honest. Is it F6? Uh, something on those lines, somewhere there. Oh, no, it is really G5. Yes. This is why the bishop is on e7 after yeah. all. Yeah. Okay, looks interesting. Mm. And you played that? Yeah. So it's the second time you played a g, g move and uh, yeah. got an advantage g2. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it all my <laughs> life. <laughs> I like it that Elizabeth Pitts and you are often referring to as like, this is your kind of move. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah white has to step back, of course. Yes. And I went queen b6. Mm -hmm trying to just attack his center he had to take take and he played h4 and all had all was normal until here and here <laughs> i saw that g4 was very natural usual stuff, looks yeah? yes he would probably go here take um i think rook b1 probably queen c3 mm -hmm. and let's say he castles and mm -hmm. i know that i have some kind of an advantage i'm pawn up of course but his king is so safe and it will never get attacked for the till he loses or wins basically Whereas my king will be eternally unsafe. So I thought, eh, why should I play that unsafe king? Let me at least try to open up his king side so he won't get to at least... I like this approach. Except that it was bad. <laughs> and I, I had the same impression as you. I, mean, I thought, yeah, looks good. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, we both underestimated how bad it was. Okay. So he took... Had uh, Also here, I had queen before check as an option, which I somehow missed to go into an endgame, but... I was somehow like just happy to win a pawn that I forgot about endgame. I see. So take, take, I won the pawn, he exchanged bishops. And I thought it was looking fine because, okay, he played rook b1. I grabbed another pawn, why not? This is also a mistake, by the way, because... Okay, oh. but it's much more complicated to explain. <laughs> Apparently, I had to check and rook b8, which was very, very strong. But only once you see the game, you realize that exchanging rooks is very important. <laughs> In my mind, oh, pawn, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Give me all those pawns. Exactly. I, I like them. Two pawns up. <laughs> Bring them to me. Line them up. Yeah, the exactly. Take them. <laughs> and now in my mind, when I took GH4, I, uh, I thought I was opening the H line for his rook. So he would naturally leave his rook on the H file, right? I mean, it's so active on the H file. Why not? Yeah. And it means, like, if you compare it to this line with g4, this rook is useless. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So in this position, uh, in this position, he would, of course, keep it. And then he castled, and I was so shocked. I was like, whoa. That is a shock, yeah. Yeah, I mean, why would you castle? Because it doesn't make sense. And then only once I started thinking here, I realized, <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> These things are not good. Because, like, while castling, his rooks are now connected, and he plans to go queen d2 next. Oh. Uh your queen is trapped almost. Yeah. So I naturally played queen a4. Yeah. Which is what I saw in my calculations. Yes. He goes queen d2, very natural. Okay. And now mm. I realized that 
it doesn't matter whether he castles or not. He's just go, he like even with castling, his attack is really good because he's planning oh. to play c4. Oh, your queen cannot track back. Oh, I mean, I can move right now, but yeah, the point is, even if I go somewhere, c4 is still too strong because. If you look at my king, where is it ever yes. going to go in this game? Oh no. There's nowhere safe for my king. Okay. His king is kind of safe, I can't really attack it. So I went queen g4. Yes, that's the only mm -hmm. move I also saw, yeah. I was very happy with it. And I only calculated rook b4, I go back, he defends, and okay, I have some couple of options here, yeah, uh, not too bad at least. Mm -hmm. And then he surprised me again with knight h2, I, I didn't even see this move honestly. Oh wow. Knight h2, I was like, oh, I went <laughs> back, and he pushed f4. And in, okay, again, in my mind, I think he should not want to weaken his king, but he has this really brilliant uh, like sense of initiative that yeah, he saw this really yeah, yeah, yeah. fast, and I was really impressed, honestly, mm -hmm. because apparently knight h2 is the only move for an advantage, and I oh, didn't see wow. it. So I was really, really impressed with this. F4, rook g8, rook f2. Yeah, out of a sudden, there's new dangers yeah, evolving exactly. so quickly, which yeah. were like not even on the menu. Yeah, while his king still remains safe. Yeah. So now he's going to open the position up with c4 and with f5. And then yes. just imagine my king. Yeah. I pushed a5, trying <laughs> to distract, hopefully, create something. What else Take this do? pawn on a5. <laughs> it's going to be a queen soon. <laughs> yeah. He pushed c4. Bishop a6. Knight f3. Now the idea of knight d4 and all sorts of tricks with the knight. You mm -hmm. know how knights are. <laughs> so... I went rook g c8, which was not the best, but already my position was so bad, difficult to play that it was hard to like, come up with a decent plan. Basically, just preparing against this move so that I can defend my pawn. Yeah. And now, just when I've transferred my rook, he goes f5. Starting oh. side. Uh, starting yeah, yeah, that's what I saw earlier mm. already. Yeah, uh, it's so terrible. Yes. I went queen g4. Okay, it's already losing at this point because he's attacking so yeah. so well. He traded on f6, uh, traded on e6, which was not the best, but still winning. Here. And apparently I should have played rook f8 here. But I made another mistake with rook g8. Because, uh, I don't know, somehow I wanted to block the check like this. Yeah, it looks okay for me. And then yeah. get another rook in maybe mm. in best day case. Yes. But unfortunately, first of all, he has knight d4 here. Which is just winning. Oh, God. Because if oh, I take... Oh, you cannot take. Yeah, because yeah, now he yeah, takes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Disaster. The rook is gone, yeah. And oh. knight d4 just win easily. He decided to take, which was a mistake. And here I should have gone uh, rook g f8. But this is computer stuff. And why would I go rook g8 and then rook g f8? Doesn't make sense. <laughs> right? And he, of course, predicted that well. And I went rook g7, which is the blunder. And here, knight d4 honestly would seal the game on the spot. Because there are too many threats, basically. Too many uh, threats. Oh, wow. But he decided to trade on d5 first. Okay. And if I take, then he goes here. Yeah. But practically speaking, this is a slight in inaccuracy because I decided to change matters and go to h8. Now, he saw this move. And his idea was to play knight h2, which he played instantly. Very natural, right? Yeah. The point is to deflect my queen from defending the spawn. Of like, course, yeah. I can't take because he wins my queen. So I played queen g3. But before I go ahead, I'll tell you that knight h2 is a blunder and he's not even winning anymore. No one would believe that, right? I mean, suddenly you look in this position, whoa, there's no checkmate. He started, like, I'll tell you what happened. He had around 30 minutes on the clock while I had one minute. And he oh started God. thinking. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, and he started thinking. And then I think we both realized that, oh, there is no checkmate. And then after some time, I started even thinking, wait, how does even white draw the game? Oh, funny. Because suddenly I'm creating a threat, yeah, very annoying. And then later, when he was still thinking, I saw like a way to draw for him. It was takes. I go here. He takes. I think I take uh, like this. Still no checkmate, by the way. Check. Takes. Check. Oh my god. Still living. And now there's nothing, so black, ha white has to go for this. Yeah, that's what I thought too. This. Check on c8. 
the bishop. No, it's not right. possible. Yeah. But you can check on b6 though. Yeah. Here. And this is just a draw by perpetual. Oh. But the point is that white is playing for a draw. It's really amazing. <laughs> wow. There were some other draws, but all crazy stuff. In the end, he just collapsed with rook b3 because probably he couldn't believe that he was not winning. <laughs> and I win this very important pawn on e5 while still keeping the same threats. Wow. He played some moves like this, but now my king was just too safe. And he resigned. And by the way, uh, <laughs> no, but uh, though, I'll tell you where he missed the win. Over here. But uh, it's like the imp impossible. It's a move that no human would ever find. Well, I mean, all it, you computers who are watching right now. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean the computer will find it in two seconds. Basically. Yes, I know, I know. But during the game, I never suspected that this would be possible. And <clears throat> my friend actually, Lubo, who works for Chesspace as well, he played with me in the Bundesliga. He mm -hmm. told me like how amazing this was and it ha happens like very, very rarely. And he gives this to all his students and they fail miserably because it's just too difficult. Yeah? <laughs> I mean, even for me, it was honestly just humanly impossible during a game at least. All right, now you have to resolve it. What was the move? The move was d takes c6. Take the bishop, right? What the hell? Yeah. Rook d2. Oh, come on. Yeah. What? That's trick me. <laughs> no. <laughs> really amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. Like who would take a pawn and then attack a that knight, which is already attacked beautiful. by Beautiful. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And if I try to move the knight, he gets this very valuable f6 square. Mm -hmm. There is a line like this. I take. He takes. Oh, God. I take here, sacrificing my queen just because it's going to get captured anyways. It looks like I'm surviving, but unfortunately I'm not because... Uh, it's a check uh, with the rook win. Like this. Yeah. Fucking the night. Gosh. So how did you feel after that? Uh, very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> it's like on Google, yeah? I'm feeling lucky that option is there. <laughs> I'm fe I was feeling lucky. Fair enough, fair I mean, enough. Very unfortunate for my opponent, <laughs> of course, lucky. but I don't know. Sometimes you uh, need luck. And how did uh, Anton feel after that? Oh, was devastated, de yeah. definitely. Yeah. I mean, he knew it was completely winning. I knew it was completely yeah. winning for him. And okay, in order to lose such a game with time on hand, it was not the best. That really, is definitely. rough, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's how it is. That's part of this, uh, yeah. part this of the mesmerizing game, <laughs> game after yeah. all. Well, well, still, you made it happen. You also yeah. found uh, Rook H8, which uh, gave trouble and yeah. some of this. So uh, it's not like, yeah, of course, there were some things which weren't that accurate, but hmm. uh, well done for that. It's victory mm -hmm. too, after all. Mm -hmm. All right, so two in a row. Mm -hmm. Here we go. The yeah. train is moving. Next one. Santos La Taza, another uh, one of those, uh, yeah, one of the uprising uh, Spanish stars, right? Yeah, kind of. I mean, now he's kind of, uh, I don't know, stagnated a bit, but he was ah. closer to 2700 a bit earlier. My like goodness. Last year at least. My good. Ah, yeah, 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 it's yes. true. Yeah, there was another one, I forgot the name, An Andre, uh, Andrew, yeah. uh, Anton Guijaro? Yes, oh. Anton, thank you, yes, yes, mm -hmm. he was also uh, uh, up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. time to win, and now, mm -hmm. no D4 again, yeah. you played E4 again. I decided to switch, I mean, we had time to prepare, there was another S day before this game, and I had time to prepare, so... Mm -hmm. I decided to go for the Italian, which somehow my second for this tournament convinced me to do. Ah, good second. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, one of my favorite openings of all time. Probably mm. one because I've learned it like every child. Ah. And uh, yeah, but I just, uh, I love this idea that you can take on F7 at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Because it's about checkmating the king. Mm. Anyway, so... So he goes here. Yeah. And I prepared this line which is very popular these days, bishop g5. Mm -hmm. and I play nothing else, actually. Really? I've never played anything else. Yeah. Wow. It's kind of considered dubious, but nowadays <laughs> people are questioning everything. Yeah? <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really amazing. <laughs> that is true. It's like in life and in mm -hmm. chess. Yeah. yeah. So he went for one of the possible setups, and 
my preparation ended around he, not here yet <laughs> uh, here actually somewhere here okay and this was an idea of my second by the way novelty if i'm not mistaken are you uh, is it uh, can you tell who is nah, your second unfortunately not no fair no because fair enough. probably we co collaborate in the future and you know totally do do. okay totally okay so he prepared this and uh, knight g6 b5 knight a5 <laughs> and <laughs> this is a funny a very funny story i mean because in his notes for some reason he had only put some other line and then i had a doubt like why not knight a5 <laughs> and this was the only thing that i ever asked like uh, in his whole uh, he his notes included yeah. millions of variations yes. and this was the only one that i questioned <laughs> and it appeared on the board i was like no way this cannot be happening and it's uh, you're like hey! and this, your opponent is like what's happening <laughs> <laughs> no he and my opponent had no idea what was going on but it was me and my demons <laughs> and, uh, and like he was already out of book my opponent uh -huh. because bishop d5 is not a known move yes but knight a5 is natural and uh my <laughs> it was not i didn't question my second but i questioned the engine like what yeah. is this and then my second was watching the game live and then he looked wait 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 what did i do for this what did i give him for this move he checked the move was left empty <laughs> and the, I, he didn't give any line i'm like oh no <laughs> oh, a no second <laughs> <laughs> yeah so he was questioning his credibility on me and then he saw that i played king h1 in 2 minutes which is like a ridiculous move <laughs> but it's only the computer who told me the idea and then <laughs> he couldn't believe it he thought it was not possible for me to play such a move and he saw i played in two minutes so like well okay <laughs> it worked out in the end <laughs> <laughs> i can still be happy about yeah. this whole situation how mm. funny but the game was far from over far from oh yeah he played g4 na g1 h5 uh, yeah i i watched the pawns mm. uh, assembling <laughs> <laughs> and i thought like what is actually happening here how can white be still confident mm. the point is to play h3 and it's okay and that's that's why king h1 na g1 <laughs> oh, yeah, totally fine yeah, nothing exactly. <laughs> i you know this meme where there's this dog sitting on the chair and the house is burning around him dog? and he says This is fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's like how I imagined you in this position. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, it's not okay. it's far from being dangerous, but it gets yeah. even uh, crazier, I think. Yeah, exactly. He played bishop e6 and here I was finally out of book. Out okay. Of book. And I spent a long time a lot of options, of course. In the end I chose a pretty decent one, which mm -hmm. is to trade like this and then go d4. Because now if you look at it even his king is unsafe wherever it goes. So we're both playing with kind of unsafe kings which suits my tournament situation I need to win. He played here, I played here. He castle and somehow here I played inaccurately. I should have played with more energy but I decided to take it slow and already here he was better because my bishop is kind of stuck. Okay, my for you at home. When you see a position when you're white and there's like uh, 1000 pieces on the second and first uh, first row, right? <laughs> and black is pushing the pawns forward to mm -hmm. to become a queen surely <laughs> i mean uh, but you were actually you were like it's all fine it's all uh, good it's like i mean i was pretending that would happen but uh, i knew that uh, something was messed up <laughs> but i knew it was a complicated position so anything can happen wow and we did this king g7 was i mean <laughs> rook e4 even i that's when i saw that too i thought like how <laughs> on earth <laughs> no But actually like, i don't want to trade queens like i'll just uh, you can have my rook if you want yeah the problem is that i can't i have to get my pieces out yeah yeah exactly if i play like this <laughs> i will lose the game so my idea is to try and create a blockade with the rook yeah and it's beautiful and the idea is to bring the knight out like this and then yep. slowly push which worked out great in the game because i it's did this it's unbelievable that this is working and then he played king h7 i'm not sure what he was doing but he played this <laughs> i mean he kind of he chose the wrong plan and then corrected it later yes he's but, like oops shit yeah. <laughs> exactly as, 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 uh, only problem is that he had to use a move yeah <laughs> <laughs> i didn't give him shadow <laughs> <laughs> he played here gh3 and now g3 i was very happy with this idea that's like, beautiful yeah. yeah because i saw like after i i thought for a long time like okay h3 it's it's over how how can you mm. and then you play g3 and i thought like uh, and now what the heck is this really working because 
yeah, after all, and this is something which I still have to learn, I mean, yeah, it kind of looks okay for white. At least all your pieces are on that side yeah, but for I, one but reason. But more importantly, at least my pieces are g getting alive now. Exactly, yes. That's, and then you, you manage to get out uh, all of them and, uh, yeah, do more damage even soon. Yeah. Because, only here. Yeah, the tides are turning. I don't even know if taking... Uh, but what else should Black take uh, make? Yeah, no, what he yeah. did was pretty forceful. So just that he should have played accurately somewhere here. Yeah. And he just wasted this time by uh, playing the king. But around here, it was still very complex, of course. And I should have taken with the bishop, which <laughs> I didn't really consider because... No. Okay. But apparently, it's very strong. Because if you look at it, even his pieces are offside. Like the yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I meant, yeah. Hmm. But I took with the knight, but this is not accurate because of that knight f4. That so accurate. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, okay, knight the point f4. is that he let, he creates, like, space for the queen to go back to g6. So if I just uh, move somewhere, okay. then he goes back and, okay, now I'm actually losing. <laughs> so this would not be good. Oh. And if I trade queens like this, like this, it still is not good. Because, okay, I mean, I don't really have an attack and he has more material, pawn up or something. So this is not an option. So in the end, I took this dangerous pawn on a6. That was also such a crazy mm -hmm. decision. I couldn't believe it. Like walking into the discovered mm -hmm. uh, queen attack. Like, yeah. But his idea is, of course, to play here, which is what I saw because his queen is under attack. Yes. I win the knight. I have nothing better to do. And he plays h4. Which is very strong, but I also anticipated it because if he takes first, then I take here, he blocks, and I sack my queen. Now, if you count the material, I have two rooks, two knights, and a bishop. Oh my god. He has gosh. queen, rook, knight. And this means I have more material. <laughs> but of course, he's seen this and he plays h4 first. Mm -hmm. Now, if I take here, he, the only difference is that he's not given up his bishop. So, it's much more useful for him. Yeah, not good. And my situation on the king side is actually burning down. And it's not fine this time. <laughs> yeah, there's a checkmate threat uh, soon enough and all of that. Yeah. So, I have to play rook g1 to save the fort. Now, he takes. And this is the whole forcing line where I sack my queen. <laughs> and we end up like this. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah. Unbelievable. And here I thought it should be a draw because I have kind of a fortress and some counterplay. Yeah. So perfectly, I should be okay. He played knight g6, just saving the knight, not allowing me to capture an f4. But I played uh, rook g4, which was very important because mm -hmm. I kind of uh, create pressure here. And also now suddenly I might have some threats like this. Who knows? Yes. He took. Threatening to take on d4. And yeah. I play a nice move, bishop f2, to defend and also... That is nice, yes. So he took. And now I thought, if I, I can't really do this because, okay, he has some check and God knows what else. So you so took. I, so I play the king first. Oh, you play because the king first. I can because always take. Check. Yes. <clears throat> I can always take. It's not an option. If, uh, he has to always wait. because okay, okay. Otherwise, if he moves the knight, I just checkmate like this. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. So here, 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 something happened, and I reached the time control. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was a flash. Yeah. Exactly. And somehow I'm fine and even pressing. That's what I realized. That is so crazy. An mm. end game like this must be super, super awkward too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here I decided to defend the pawn, not take it. Yeah, because I, I have to congratulate you also for your end game skills because that wasn't easy for sure. And yeah. you managed very well here. Yeah, I mean, somehow, okay, I was lucky because my decisions weren't too difficult as well. And he had to make like tough decisions to survive. Humble guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I brought my king. Plan was to bring the king to capture the d3 pawn. But I, I invite everybody to play mm -hmm. this position with Fritz 19 and then uh, win. <laughs> Maybe some will. I don't think it's, I uh, not, it's not possible. I but against lose. a human, good chance. Good chance. Ah, okay. And here, okay, I thought for a long time and uh, it was very interesting because... I had a couple of ways to proceed, but he had only moves, literally only moves to survive. Yes. I can show you a sample variation, maybe. If I brought my king. That's what I thought, here. too. Yeah. Now I push f4 with the idea to improve my king. Yes. And once I get this and this, it's totally winning. But what does he do? Only move. Here. Yeah, of course. Well, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. yeah. Rook, uh, knight, uh, king. <laughs> that thing over there, g4, mm -hmm. is, uh, yeah. yeah, very so, annoying. 
So I can't do this. And okay, F was another option where I'll just show you the draw which I had thought about. Look at cheat. Wait, was it look at cheat? No, 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 no. Ah, sorry, sorry. Again, same story. If I get my king to f3, it's winning. So he plays rook h8 first. If I play here, then here. check. Here. Looks like Tsuk swung. He can't move his rook. <laughs> but he can move his king. Like, oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not the end of it. Because if I play here, check, here. And I thought, okay, finally I'm winning. The pawn should be winning. And then, and then I realized he sacrifices his rook. Yeah, that's all it needs. The king will be there in time. Yeah. Uh, so this was like really difficult and in the end I decided to let go and just try to play normally. Yes. Allowing this position which should be a draw. Hmm. But he allowed me to win this d6 pawn a bit too easily. Like he should have gone back. Sorry, should have gone back. But he did this and I got here. Forks and, ahead. Yeah, and he forgot that I could hide with my king and win the pawn. And then, okay, it was just a matter of technique. I regrouped a bit. Okay, now I invite yeah. you to replay this <laughs> position with Fritz. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah. Basically, I got finally this position where I managed to push the pawn and then slowly push the pawn after that. He had not much chance. All this was played fast, by the way. Yeah. And also, by the way, I invite you to learn how to checkmate with a <laughs> bishop, and <laughs> bishop and a knight. <laughs> Which was luckily quite easy because the king was already in the right yeah. corner and yes. you just, yeah. It's yeah. just a matter of 10 moves, I think, or something. Yeah. Nice! <laughs> yeah, that was an amazing win. I loved this game. I watched it uh, from the beginning to the end. Mm, yeah, it was very important as well. And oh, then I just realized 111 and 112 moves. My yes. gosh! <laughs> So, yeah, next game is against, uh, who's that? The Hans infamous. Niemann. <laughs> Not really heard of him. No, I don't know. <laughs> well, German probably, right? Yeah, should be. <laughs> yeah, so uh, funny. Um, he, he had a terrible tournament, like, mm. compared to his rating and what he has accomplished in the year or years before. Mm. And, um, yeah, we all know the story. We don't have to... Let's just concentrate on the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> C4. So, so was that a surprise, by the way? Not really. I realized that people are targeting me, me with C4. So, <laughs> Are they scared <laughs> to play E4 or D4? It's more like my repertoire was kind of limited against C4. That's why. I see. And they figured it out. <laughs> I mm -hmm. see. So, so I had to go for a they've done slough. their job. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they <Slough>. did. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he went for the sideline. Which was smart in order to play for, play, play for a win because, okay, you don't want to enter theory and all. Yeah. And we reached this pretty normal position except that I was suddenly worse because my pieces are kind of weirdly placed here. Yeah? Okay. And he played pretty well around here. Played pretty well around here. And... Uh, well, I was basically worse throughout all this because... I yeah. couldn't believe that your knight is... Uh, the, <laughs> your bishop is still holding on there, yeah. <laughs> basically, I was waiting for h3. Once h3 yes. came... Up, then it's time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> Never been a better time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I played here. <clears throat> he played here. I had to go back. But the problem is that I'm worse. Now, he should have played here rook dc1 and maybe played uh, bishop d1 and b4 next. And he would have just been much better with a great game. Mm -hmm. But he went b4 a bit too rushed, which allowed me to take and play c5. And he had missed this because he thought he was winning a pawn like this. Winning the d4 pawn. But what he didn't realize is that I somehow get my coordination back. Uh, and uh, love wow. me La you left yeah. this pawn there for four moves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but in order to get my coordination. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, okay, here already the position was very, very equal. And I was even trying to play for a win here, but I couldn't really find a decent way. So I thought, okay, just let's settle and sit, sit until the time control and see if he does something. <laughs> and okay, I thought we were doing just a, maybe hopefully a repetition until I realized, oh, snap, F4, E5 is coming. Oh, and I had to, in fact, suffer a bit. And already here, it started becoming a bit dangerous for me because he was trying to weaken my king. But in the end, I managed to reroute it here. And okay, basically, there's not much for him to progress. And queen trade, luckily for me, is still a draw. I calculated that. Oh, it okay. Be okay. And because you had even the chance to do a queen swap, but 
one or mm. two moves before, right? Yeah. Uh, but maybe it was one? a bit different. I don't know. Okay. When the king was moving to f2, or no? Yeah. And then uh, uh, queen c5? Ah, yeah, that is true. But uh, unfortunately here, I would not get a blockade because <sighs> if I trade, then he would oh, push. Oh, mm -hmm. there we go. And out of a sudden, it's completely different. Yeah. The difference over here is that uh, if I trade, then I have a blockade. And if king f2, I go here, here, Thank here, you. Here. Now I get Just it. Yes, yes. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry. This is the wrong version because now I would uh, get attacked here. Wait, the one I calculated was <laughs> here. Sorry, I trade pawns first. Ah, okay. And then here, here, and then uh, king d7. Yeah, sorry, not the other one. And that is a blockade. Yes, indeed it because is. Because I defend and yep. now it's okay. <laughs> but he decided to do this. And, mm -hmm. But okay, I mean, you cannot really play for a win with such a weak king. So in the end, he had to trade queens. And then we reached a similar ending, which is complete draw. Fair enough. A few more moves. Yeah, a few, few more hundred moves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he tried, of course. He had yeah. to. Yeah. But nothing much happened. Yeah. What here. is happening in a, if you if you mm -hmm. like he just wanted to know like mm -hmm. he wanted to say like show me. I, no, I mean he wanted to try and every chance out of the position. I understand. Yeah. For him, a win is more important to get back into the race of the. Of title. course, of course, of course. So I didn't really offer it or anything. I allowed him to do whatever he wanted because in the end it would not change anything. But yeah. <laughs> We're back. Uh, you're here uh, the whole time, of course, but uh, we are kind of back because, uh, yes, this is one of the longest videos we have launched so far, but it is massively enjoyable and I hope uh, you enjoy it as much as we do. And we are at our last three games. So I'm uh, curious because those last three games uh, are wild as hell. And uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, let's, let's dive right into this. Sure. Okay, yes, Mustafa Yilmaz, uh, 2,665. So he was like set uh, second or third best even there, mm, right? Yes, yeah. I think uh, third, yeah. Yeah, and um, we were even thinking about, I, th I believe still, I didn't check, he reached the 2,700 at one point, uh, but at least he got close, yeah. probably something like that. Yeah, so another uh, strong opponent, but you were right. And yeah. E4 worked <coughs> out quite well so far. I mean, your E4 score in total? Um, it was definitely good. That's yeah. all I remember. <laughs> I, me, me too. I think there was, uh, yeah, mostly wins, uh, no loss and a lot, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. just very positive score. So yeah. E4 you went and funnily enough, yeah, he decided to go for one E5. Usually he plays the knight off. He's a big yeah. exponent of the knight off. And, but for some reason, me and my second uh, believed that he would go for E4, E5. Just because he had knowledge of my previous game against Santos and he could prepare against that line. So we, in fact, entered into the same line as uh, the game against Santos. Mm -hmm. D3, knight F6. I changed the move order a bit by playing bishop G5 here. In the Santos game, I played C3, but I decided to switch it up a bit. So that might have surprised him a little. Yeah, he started th taking a bit of time, but after d6, I just played c3 and he was back into his usual <laughs> breath. <laughs> h6 here, and he went a6, which I believe Santos did as well. And in that game, I think I went a4, which is the most popular move in the position. But this time I decided to deviate with uh, shot castles. And here he already was uh, out of preparation, I guess, because he started to take his time. And he played the logical move, bishop a7, which is very typical, just getting out of this d4 break from white. Mm -hmm. And I went knight bd2, which was still my prep. He went g5, which is pretty much the idea of black in this whole line. You have to go g5 at some point because white has committed to this early bishop g5, bishop h4 thing. Mm -hmm. And so black basically just gets a free attack, you can say. But you're fine with that. You, yeah. you don't fear attacks. That we already <laughs> cleared out. <laughs> yeah, basically, all I need is a sharp position and <laughs> something would happen, in, hopefully, <laughs> in my favor. <laughs> yes. So, bishop g3. And here he went knight h7, which is not the most popular move, but mm -hmm. already he was out of book. And knight h7 is a typical move because it uh, threatens uh, h5 and h4 while defending the spawn. Oh, sorry. The spawn. Yes, yes. So... I love it. Like, yeah. I am always, as I said already, uh, with black, I would feel quite comfortable to go mm. for this route. Mm. But, yeah, yeah, it is interesting. And here I think I should have played d4, just heading, uh, striking straight in the center. Yeah. Because black has left with the center with his knight. Ah. And so I should have done this. But for some reason, I was hesitant about this, and I decided to play king h1, 
which is not the best. <laughs> but once again, it is the <laughs> yeah. It worked the last time, so I was hoping it, it, it gives space for the knight. It yeah. gets the king out of this line. So yeah, yeah I think it's uh, something to consider more and more probably mm. for a lot of people who are like the Italian and like to play this. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely interesting. But what this allowed was that, uh, okay, if h5, first of all, I can choose, I think h4 is a good option just to... That this, closes it up. Mm. The, it's the usual way of meeting uh, mm -hmm. h5. But what he could have done was play knight f8 probably and reroute the knight to g6. And let's say after d4, knight g6, he is just in time to defend the center. Okay. And now h4, h5 is much more dangerous because h4 is not possible uh, due to the knight being on g6. Oh, and then this would yeah. Have, yeah, this was basically a dangerous situation for yeah, me. Yeah, so maneuvering the knight would have been mm. some, yeah, a bit not, so, not so easy to see, I guess, maybe, mm. I don't know. But I he, wouldn't have seen it. <laughs> I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, it's very difficult to play such positions. There are so many tempting possibilities. And okay, I mean, what he did was pretty natural as well. Just castling, because <clears throat> wow, black also castles in these lines. I mean, once you start analyzing these lines, you realize that this, uh, this sort of stuff is also possible, like attacking while the king is castled as well. Interesting. So, okay. Mm. So and of course, yeah, the knight, uh, the rook goes on the f file, so you can give some more. At one point, mm. f5 will happen, yeah. right? Yeah. Something like that, yeah. At least in this game it happened, but basically mm -hmm. you can even castle and attack. Hmm. I decided to play a4 with the idea of uh, playing b4 and b5. And in general, it's a useful move. Yeah, giving some stress on the other side of the board. Yeah. He went king h8, which is kind of normal. And also, as you said, uh, keeping the option of f5, yeah. also just h5 or something like that. I pushed here, he pushed h5, now I went h3. This is the whole idea of playing king h1 to give space for the knight on g1. But he played h4, I moved back, and he started to try and open up the king side. I don't <laughs> blame him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I uh, traded, he did so as well. And here, I remember spending a lot of time because my original idea was to play how I did in the game, basically, queen e1, to try and unpin this knight so that I can move it at some point and yeah. try to push f4 myself. But then I was suddenly worried about rook g8. Was it rook g8 here? Ah, oh, no, sorry, it was uh, queen f6, which was very strong because the idea of queen e1 was to, as I said, get out of the space. Yeah. But if I pushed a b5 immediately, I think he had this option of playing knight a5. And uh, I have to move this bishop at some point, yeah? Yeah. Let's say I move it somewhere, like bishop d5 or something. He always has this option of f5. He can start with c6 probably. I think this is what I thought about during the game, something like this. And then suddenly he can even push f5 if he wants to. And uh, yeah, basically, or queen f6, one of these options. Basically, it did not look too good. And I didn't want to push b5 immediately. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I thought about queen e1 with the idea of b5, which looked very good because my idea is basically b5 and d4, just straight away attack the center. But he has this very nice move, queen f6, which I was afraid of. And let's say I go knight g1 because that was my idea of unpinning. He would go rook g8, f4. Everything looks great. I mean, I'm opening up his f7 would be weak and everything, right? Yeah. But unfortunately, he has this move, queen g7, I think. Or queen g6 is also possible, but queen g7, let's say. Mm -hmm. Let's say I take. And now, can you guess the move? Yes, yes. Um, so there is a checkmate threat on g2. Yes. So you just have to get the bishop to f3, I guess. Yeah, that would be very strong, yes. And uh, I, I originally I calculated only bishop e2 for some reason. I missed this. But I can probably sacrifice an exchange and hope for some compensation. Like he would take, I would take. And probably I have decent compensation. I have no idea. But it looked complicated. Yes. Huh? But then I noticed bishop f3 and I was, oh, <laughs> checkmate. <laughs> but then suddenly I saw this move after a long time, queen g3. And I was very happy because I thought it saved the day. Okay. The takes, idea is to, takes, let's say he takes here. I take. Takes, takes. And you take back. Yeah. And I'm completely fine. But what I missed was that he can take on g2. Brilliant check. I take. And now it looks like I'm still okay, right? I mean, my queen is defending and all is good. But he can move his queen out of the way. Very nice move. And suddenly I'm losing my queen. 
that is <laughs> why don't you see this? I mean, <laughs> like I, I don't, I like, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that is brutal. Yeah. So this is what I missed basically in all these lines. But luckily for me, he didn't go queen f6. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he went f5, which is a novelty, but not a good one at all. Because he completely missed the resource that I had in this position. And it was unfortunate for him that it was already losing after this. Wow. Because <clears throat> I played a b5. He went knight a5, which is normal. But he missed that I could take on e5 suddenly, which is very strong. And all of a sudden, it's his king who's weak. And the idea of the sacrifices that yes. I take, take. I think I saw this part and I was mm -hmm. like jumping up in excitement because <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Like mm -hmm. this beautiful sacrifice is the killer. Yeah. Mm. And he's forced to stop. And the, the whole point is to play f3, winning a tempo on the bishop. Yeah. And suddenly the queen joins the attack as well. That's well calculated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, he traded. And went here. He didn't have much option, I mean, because it was just sure. it was just lost, basically. Yeah? Took king g7. And d4, I was very happy with this move because I, I was not rushing to win material. Like, it looks it looks like a juicy bishop because of the pin. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, don't do that. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. <laughs> that would be disastrous. <laughs> so I didn't fall for that. But I played d4 instead, just strengthening my uh, bishop so that even if it's attack, it's already defended. Yeah, I thought like uh, that's interesting that you're you're just also although you have this huge advantage, you also know, and this was like it's at least the third or th fourth time now mm. that you can play those moves, which are maybe not the very best, but they're so good they will definitely win the game even mm. stronger. Like if yeah. give the, the opponent even more problems. Yeah, mm. you're you're cutting off the D. Diagonal. Exactly. That was the main point. That's so that beautiful. Something if something appears on the H file, I have the square G one at least. Yeah. So you have time for that. So mm. you do it. Yeah. So he went bishop G six. I'm not sure what he could have done, but I think it was already just lost. Uh, bishop G six, queen G five. Also, queen F four was possible, but uh, I decided on queen G five. Yeah, queen G five is good. And he checked and uh, played rook H five to defend his pawn, but I just moved back. And, okay, it looks like he's defended, but in fact, uh, I just have too many pawns. And if you look, his pieces are basically just doing nothing. Bishop is stuck. Knight is pinned. Bishop is stuck. <laughs> and my pieces are just dominating, winning so much yep. material. Yeah. He played queen d7. Oops, sorry. Queen d7. And I just win knight e3, which is, again, very strong because I threatened this. Sorry. This and also this. And okay, c5 was out of desperation, but I, <laughs> I don't know what to recommend in any case. Yeah. And I pinned the knight and just trapped this bishop just because I could. And he went here and here he designed. Yeah, so yes, 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 yes. I think there was one or two more little tiny tricks for black, but uh, yeah. you were able to dodge them. Quick game, yeah. 31 moves again. Yeah. And uh, once again, the Italian game. <laughs> Uh, yeah, very nice demonstration. And both times I would have feared for my life as white, but uh, you just showcase that you, there's nothing to fear. It's all good <laughs> once you play the king to h1. <laughs> yeah. All right, two more games to go. Mm -hmm. But the bad news, I mean, I was definitely very happy about this win and yeah. a very important win. But the bad news was that Maurizio also kept winning. He, he, yeah, he was game. just doing <laughs> the same as you. He yeah. was also on a golden streak. Yeah, and he was now one point ahead of me, which yeah. is a lot. That is too much. Yeah. So, Maybe. Mm -hmm. So that, therefore, the next game was against uh, Salem. Yeah. <laughs> And that is like, yeah, another one who is in mm. Welcome to the 2700 Club. But yeah. also his tournament wasn't that good, right? It, it started off decently, but then yeah. he kind of lost a bit of steam. So. Yeah. Have you ever played him before? Yes, in fact. I played him once uh, in 2022 in the Abu Dhabi Masters. Uh -huh. He was, in fact, closer to 2700 then than now. Ah, he was yeah. like 2679, if I remember correctly. Oh. And that ended in a draw. I was losing in that game, but <laughs> somehow I escaped and it ended in a draw. Fair enough. And yeah, basically, I was happy to face him because uh, he's always a fighting player and very double-edged, and he doesn't care about the result, and he's just ready to play a game of chess. So oh, that's nice. That's all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's all that I needed, in fact, to get winning chances and try for a win. So I have to ask, because now it's an interesting situation I thought of. Um, so there's Maurizi, your biggest opponent at the moment, and uh, he's play he was playing, do you remember? Uh, Daniel Darna. 
Yeah, so two. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he was, uh, Daniel Dada also had a lot of points, right? Yes, yeah. but I think uh, half behind me or something. Yes, half yes, 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 exactly. So um, when you were playing against Salem, were you always like walking over to Maurizio and check mm -hmm. their game and see like, how are you doing? Um, not really, because I knew I had no option but to win. <laughs> Okay, that's <laughs> a good point. One point, point yes. is too much, so I have, I think, have to win. I think that makes sense, yeah. Mm. All right, let's uh, take a look. So he yeah. played e4, yes. and once again, you used Joe's yeah. uh, French, French defense. <laughs> okay, first of all, he's mainly a d4 player, but somehow me and my second again predicted very well that he might go for e4 because... Fantastic. Uh, yeah, basically, we just felt he had a thing for e4 in this tournament. He was playing e4 quite often, and recently he started playing e4 as well, so... Mm -hmm. Some of both Korobov and him, both solid D4 players, went for E4. So. And we predicted it well. So I decided for the French. And uh, he chose the ah, main also, thing with Knight C3. Nobody plays E5 against you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's nowadays actually the fashion trend is going towards E5, I believe. Exactly, yeah, very strongly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've I've seen, I mean, yeah, Dorian covered it. Elisabeth Pates also mentioned that she played the uh, French like this mm -hmm. recently. Mm -hmm. And it always seems as if the French is getting a little bit of a difficult situation, but then <laughs> white is overplaying or mm -hmm. somehow black is getting out of the situation. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a time where, French, where the French was much, much more to be feared. But mm -hmm. let's see, uh, maybe you're bringing it back on track again. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. So he played knight c3, I went for the Steinitz variation. You can also go Vinauer, which is another line. Mm -hmm. But uh, I went for this one, he, he pushed, this is all the main line, knight of d7. Well, f4. there we go. Yeah, all theory as you can see. Knight c6, bishop e3, a6. Now he played queen d2, which is the main line, although there are other possibilities as well. A I faced a3 before, bishop e2 is also something. Yeah, I like this a3 and then mm. b4 variation quite a lot uh -huh. so at one point. <laughs> so he played uh, queen d2, which is the main line, has been the main line for a long time now. And I went b5, also the modern main line, you can say. And uh, here he played, okay, of course, as you can see in the live database, there are millions of moves. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, but right now, in fact, the fashion trend is going towards uh, H4, which is what he played in the Boom. game. <laughs> Just going for it straight away. Yeah. And other moves are, what, A3, you can take on C5, but now it's kind of just too dry. Black is completely fine. Uh -huh. What does it say? Bishop e2, bishop, oh, sorry, not king, damn, not Bonclar. <laughs> bishop e2, <laughs> bishop d3, all this stuff, basically. But he went for h4. Okay. And I went for bishop b7, which is, I think, the engine's first choice as well, and I had analyzed this well before the event. Mm -hmm. So I went for bishop uh, b7, and he, he played queen f2, trying to pressure the pawn on c5. Natural, yeah. And I played queen b6. I was still in prep as I think he was as well. Uh, and here he decided to play rook h3, which is a very interesting move. That is. Yeah, it's kind of a waiting move actually because it's not clear what white is doing, but he's just trying to keep well, his options open. I can tell you what white is not doing. It's uh, castling the <laughs> uh, to, to king the king side. <laughs> yeah, <anymore>. yeah. <laughs> that is true. So, huh. yeah, basically uh, rook h3 is very interesting as well. And I, if, I think it's the engine stop choice, if I'm not mistaken, as well, still. Is that yeah. so? Mm -hmm. So he also knew about this mm. for sure, yeah. yeah. And now I played a very strange move, queen a5, because I literally just played queen b6. That's previously. true, yeah. But it's a very deep point, extremely deep. And it's basically that in some line, uh, like if I had played queen a5 directly, in some line, white was getting an option to castle short. I think uh -huh. something like okay, this. Okay, now I get it, yeah. <laughs> something like that. I yeah. Think. I think if you went B4, uh, I don't even remember myself. This computer stuff is so confusing. It, that but all I know, confusing. Yeah, all goodness. I don't know is that uh, something like, um, was it like this maybe? Something like this probably, yeah. Wow. Ah, knight B4. Yes, this makes sense. <laughs> knight B4, and I think it was here that he had castles. I think so. Okay. I mean, you can check it further yourself, but this is what I remember. Mm -hmm. And this is the, dif the difference that after rook h3, queen f5, the same line, white basically cannot castle. All computer stuff. 
<laughs> and Kathleen not possible, and so the, the whole line works for black, so queen a5. Oh, all this computer <laughs> stuff. Yeah. But he was aware of it because the computer also suggested, so he played h5. Wow. Pretty normal, just kind of doing what he is supposed to do, attack on the okay. king side. I developed my bishop. He played bishop d2 now, because long castle is very bad due to b4 and Yeah, that is inviting. not helpful. Mm -hmm. So he decided to chase my queen away by creating an x-ray threat on the queen. I moved back. He played knight e2 now. I shot castle, long castle, c takes d4. Getting e interesting. Yeah, except that uh, my preparation ended here. <laughs> <laughs> here? Yeah. I moved 16. Yeah, I mean, you need to know enough to play the French like this. <laughs> wow. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult. I think he had probably known it until around uh, here or something. I think Long Castles, if I'm not mistaken. He told me this. But, okay, b4. But the position is still complicated. A lot of life ahead. And uh, it's sharp for both sides because I'm trying to create play on the queen side, whereas he's trying to do something on the king side. Mm -hmm. Enough chances to play for a win at least. He played king b1. Very natural. I mean, typical move in yeah. Sicilians as well. You see it a lot. And here I should have played a knight c5, was it here knight c5 or? Yeah, I think it was knight c5 here with the idea of... Uh, I mean, e4 looks too beautiful. Mm. But yeah, it was a very dumb miscalculation on my part because I somehow thought he can uh, win a pawn like this. But I just forgot that after this, this, I simply chop it off and then I have oh. a knight f2 in the end. It was very dumb. I mean, usually I should see such uh, things, but I just missed it this time. Yeah, don't be too hard on yourself. I guess it's fine. You can miss it. <laughs> no, the problem is this was the only move to not be worse. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. But I played a5, <laughs> just trying to defend the pawn and going knight c5 next. But here he already t uh, went for something very concrete, which was to play knight takes c6. There Bishop we have it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now f5, which I didn't expect at all. Oh, once again f5. Yeah. It was even, it looks similar to the Korobov game a bit again. Mm. Yeah. So he had some similar positions in, I mean, of course, you used the same game. So opening. probably it is, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, opening. So it's probably normal, I guess. And yeah. Mm, yeah. I mean, the structures are pretty similar. So yeah. yeah. So now you cannot take on e5. E, I could, but we were analyzing this. It was very complicated. I mean, yeah. There was something like this we were analyzing, I remember. And here, probably queen f6 as well as queen takes f5. Basically, we thought it was okay in the end, but not at all clear what was yeah, going bishop on. bishop d3. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But also here, queen g3 was something. Uh-huh. Bishop Just d6. Just trying to pin. And if I go bishop d6, he probably has... Uh, what was it we analyzed? Maybe here. F6. Yeah, F6 oh, here was very strong, actually. That is very strong. And basically, Bishop F6, there was uh, Bishop F4. Oh, okay. But it's not over yet. He told me some crazy line, like he <laughs> was afraid of, I think it was Bishop A4 here. Yeah, that's a threat. But for me, it was unexpected. I never thought, I never considered about such a thing. Oh, that is a big, yeah, because then the rook is going to c8, and now, uh, you cannot play bishop d3. Yeah, basically yeah. just attacking the c3. And the point is, once the rook goes to c1 to defend, it leaves the bishop undefended. Yeah. And so he thought about something like this. Oh! Sacrificing the queen. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and it's all mayhem on the board. <laughs> what? Something like this, and God knows what's happening. <laughs> yeah, I see, I see, I understand. <laughs> we leave the uh, the typical evaluation. Yeah, you can, you can check that at yeah. home. Yeah. That is something fun to replay, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather be black here? Yeah. Yes, yes. But, I mean, I, so I didn't too. consider Bishop E4 at all. Sure. For me, it was completely unexpected. But, yeah, basically, this was possible. But I decided on EFF because, okay, I didn't see anything wrong with it. Mm -hmm. And also, if I can take a pawn, why not? <laughs> Just chop a pawn off. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. So his idea was to play queen g3 because it looks very natural to play knight d4, right? To just get this knight plonk here. Yeah. But I have this very strong move of bishop c5. Yeah. Getting rid of it. And so he can't do it now. So he played queen g3, which is defending the pawn and also threatening the nasty bishop h6. 
And I had a couple of options here, but like for example, knight c5, allowing bishop h6, let's say I go g6, sacrificing the exchange. <laughs> But <laughs> it was a difficult, uh, not, maybe not takes, maybe he takes on g6 first. I take back, he takes, I take, and okay, this position we thought was less compensation for black. I mean, I thought as well, and we discussed it later, he agreed, kind of. So, I mean, it's always hard to evaluate. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's still interesting. Yeah, it was a very complicated game. Mm -hmm. You cannot take decisions easily, but I decided to escape that. But the only once again, <laughs> King. Oh yeah, I just realized I've been King doing this a lot. <laughs> King H one. Oh, I H8. think Carlson is one of the people who really made this a fashionable move uh -huh. often enough. Yeah, mm. if I'm not mistaken. Uh -huh. But the only problem with just sidestepping is that now he has knight d four, and the difference is that I do not have bishop c five eliminating it because his queen is not on f two anymore. Eh. But anyways, I played that. With the takes I, on f five, right? Yes. Yeah. And the idea was to uh, take on e5 with the queen uh -huh. and offer a queen trade. And I believed I was doing okay over here. I mean, I'm a pawn up, although he has some kind of threats, but it's not really checkmate yet. And I'm pawn up, so kind of even. Mm -hmm. He played queen g4, rejecting a queen trade naturally because queen trade would not be good, too good for him being material down. Sure. And now I went for this move rook g8, which is a bit <laughs> weird. <laughs> But <laughs> basically, I wanted to bring my knight into the game and not get checkmated because my queen was defending the pawn. Gotcha. He played bishop d3. And uh, now I went rook a8. I thought there was no hurry for knight f6. And I can just kind of wait a bit and just improve a rook, basically, see what he's up to because mm -hmm. I couldn't see any real threats for him. Yeah? He played queen h4, which was apparently very strong somehow. Because, uh, yeah, somehow, uh, I don't know. It's a very good prophylactic move, getting out of knight f6. Yeah. And also, it's, I'm, it's not sure, clear what I'm doing. Yeah? Okay. Now, a very tempting move for me would be to play here. Just to get the knight e5. Because, okay, knight and uh -huh. e5 would create a lot of trouble for him. But the problem is he would go h6. Uh. <laughs> Quite dangerous. But g6, only g6. chance. But now the problem is knight oh. g7. What? <laughs> Crazy, right? And suddenly I'm oh, fucked. Gosh. So, yeah, that was not nice. So I could not go queen e6. And I decided to just, okay, keep it simple and prevent this once and for all. Yeah? Why to allow all this nonsense? And he decided to improve his rook. How dare he? <laughs> but also it is kind of preventing knight f6 because now if knight f6, then he meets it with uh, knight takes h6. Ah, yeah. oh. And nasty threat over there. <laughs> so I couldn't do that. But then I found this uh, simplifying move, bishop e7, which was kind of a saving grace because I had a lot mm -hmm. of, there was a lot of pressure being built up on my king side and just trying to eliminate it. And if he does not exchange, then, then bishop f6, yeah. yeah. And just kind of defend everything safely. This looks nice. Which is what happened in the game, actually, because he went back. Oh, he didn't take. Yeah, because if he took, then I would be kind of happy. Because at least now there's no real checkmate, if you think about oh, okay. it. Okay. So only the, the only tricks that he has are with the knight. So he goes queen f2. I win bishop f6, bishop c1. He, c3 was somehow possible, but this no, was crazy. No, looks... Yeah. We both thought it was too risky, but somehow it was interesting because there was no actual clear way for takes, me to attack. Bishop takes... Yeah. His knight is too strong on f5. Yeah. But he went bishop c1, which was more natural, definitely. And now um, I couldn't see what to do because he's kind of solidified his king side and mm -hmm. I also have kind of defended myself. So I decided to try and play a4. I think yeah. that's a <laughs> nice move. Yeah. Except for the problem that I missed that he plays rook e8. I go back. This was the whole point. Oh. He exchanged. And I exchange. I thought everything is going well. Yeah. Until, boom. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just when you think everything is fine and then this appears out of nowhere. I was like, oh, snap. Of course I missed that. Now, a bad idea would be to queen e5. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> okay, so that so, is terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and basically I realized that I literally have no option, practically speaking, but to take mm -hmm. and just deal with it. Because oh, I saw he could play Queen F5, that was the whole point. How to save this bush? Yeah. Knight <laughs> F8? Yeah, but unfortunately... Oh God, no, it's not working. Yeah. I have only one move in my opinion though. Okay, to King go, G7. Yeah. If I went here, then I think he can just take on H6, preventing my escape. Oh! And therefore threatening checkmate. And that would end my Tata Steel hopes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm now also wondering after King G7, mm -hmm. then Bishop takes H6. Yeah. In hindsight, he should have taken this. Yeah. And it would be a draw after this. It would have been a draw only mm. because there's no checkmate. How yeah. can there be no checkmate <laughs> in this position? Wow. Yeah. No, but he, in his uh, mind, he thought Queen and Chen was completely winning, continuing the attack. Yeah. I didn't know what to think because at my, I was just trying to run away. <laughs> yes. Escape at least. I understand. <laughs> so he went here. And now, if he takes, I simply run. And there's, in fact, no real checkmate because I get to this point. Crazy. And okay, where's the attack really? There's no real attack. But what he had planned and what I'd also seen as well was this. Boom. And if he, if I take, now suddenly this whole line is opened up due to my pawn leaving and oops. <laughs> it's uh, over. That would be disastrous. Oh, wow. So after bishop g6, I have to somehow defend this guy on e7. The only move was knight e5. Oh, God. <laughs> So rook e7 doesn't work because rook, e7 rook doesn't work. f1, I guess? Or you can simply just take on h6. Oh. And now my yeah, uh, escape it. on e7 would be blocked. And after king eight, queen g8, yeah, basically it's over. Yeah. So, but luckily for me, if you look at it, I had pretty much only moves to make. Knight e5 is an only move. because It's very easy to eliminate, at least to see that nothing else works. Mm -hmm. And knight e5 is basically the only thing. And same thing, if he takes here, I just go here and I'm not losing anymore. Yeah. Oh, oh God. <laughs> and here, wait, was it here or I think it was here that, wait, he could have played rook f1, but what was the point? We discussed this. I think I could have played queen d6 and still yeah. kind of save the day, if I'm not mistaken. But he played rook e1, which he thought was winning, finally winning, right? <laughs> the idea is to just eliminate this knight mm -hmm. and then checkmate. That's a good idea. Yeah. And it looked great until there was another only move of bishop g7. <laughs> just trying to block this queen's way. Escaping on mm -hmm. a thread. Yeah. And this kind of, I think, mentally shook him because he thought it was over until yeah. bishop g7 appeared and suddenly he has to try and think again. I never would have seen this probably. <laughs> But uh, um, well done for defending this like that. Yeah, I, mean, I had to. <laughs> and here I think we discuss this very interesting move, rook f1. Yeah. Which is not too natural considering you're trying to checkmate. But now if you think about it, we are both stuck. I can't move and he can't move as well. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> he can't, uh, okay, uh, first of all, he's threatening bishop takes h6. Yeah, you might ah. be wondering what's the threat. Oh, oh there's zero, I think. You might be wondering what's the threat. The threat is to take, take, and boom. And checkmate. So therefore... Why did this <laughs> work? <laughs> yeah, but after here, I have like a couple of ways to defend f7. Ah, because the bishop is moving away. I'm like, why, mm. why, why did I miss? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course. Okay. So I have a couple of options. Queen c7, queen b7, queen c7, which I have no idea of <laughs> what the evaluation is. You can try to find. Or queen b5 is another one. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. But in any case, this was inhuman to find in time pressure. And he just desperately took on h6 because it's most natural and he has to play a move if we were in time pressure. But I just took, took, and ran with the king. And goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Oh, everything is hanging on a thread. Yeah. Like. And not only is he not winning, but suddenly he's a piece down as well. <laughs> and he has to kind of deal with that. And he played bishop f5 because if he goes... Queen here. I think I can uh, just just play. king d d6. Yeah. 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 In my, I, I just saw I have at least f6 where I solidify the thing and then move my rook next move. But I can probably go king d6 as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but he played bishop f5, 
attacking my bishop on c6. So I decided to exchange because, well, it's a good trade for me, I think. He checked. I moved here. He checked. And I continued running. <laughs> and we reached the time control. And I'm a piece up, <laughs> basically. There's <laughs> still this pawn on h5, which yeah, looks exactly. a bit dangerous. Yeah, exactly. That's why in this case, he took, took check. I moved back. And now, I, you know, on a usual day, I would have been happy. I'm just winning. <laughs> but now I was suddenly afraid because I realized there was a similar game. I think it was uh, Steinitz versus Lasker from the World Championship match, where uh, I think Lasker had the spawn on h6 or h7. And uh, with the same material bands, queen, rook, and pawn on h6 or h7. Mm -hmm. And uh, Steinitz had a queen, knight, and rook, and an open king. <laughs> And in that case, White, White was winning, oh, even though really? he was pieced down. <laughs> and that game left a big impression on me, actually. Oh. And so I was suddenly afraid. But then I started thinking about it, and I was like, wait a minute. Once I play a3 and queen e5, suddenly his king is also weak. Okay. How does he defend? He can't really defend against that, can he? So, okay, of course, of, uh, after the move on e, uh, the rook on e1 moved somewhere mm. else. He played rook c1, yes. Ah, I see, okay. I played queen e5. Yes. And now suddenly h3 is a real, a3 is a real threat. Yeah. So he played queen d2, trying to, like, in case of a3, he just takes on b4. Although it's losing, but at least it's the best <laughs> chance. And he had, I think this was the last accurate move I had to play, rook b8. Yes, I thought about mm -hmm. this too. And now after a3, it's just devastating. So he played a few more moves, but it was basically no hope. Something like this happened, and I pinned the thing, pushed, nice. and did everything smoothly with a piece up. Oh, tactics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. he has no perpetual, of course. <laughs> Beautiful. What a game again. Well defended and well turned around this. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, then you won. Yeah. One ra round to go. How did yeah. uh, Andrea Maruzzi play? And he lost his game to Darda, and that was like just an unexpected chance because he had white as well, and losing with white <sighs> is not really easy. And the pressure. <laughs> Basically, yeah, an unexpected chance at the last moment. So, it was not only that, because your next opponent, and we're not talking about weaker and stronger players, but Divya is, uh, I think. Was the lowest rated or second uh, lowest rated yeah, or something? Yeah, she was rated yeah. twenty four twenty. That's a chance, yeah, right? Definitely, <laughs> especially with white. Yeah. How how did you sleep the night before? Oh, I was not, I didn't sleep well at all. <laughs> oh, no. I probably sl managed to sleep around five hours or something. Oh, wow! Uh, I just couldn't stay awake. I remember. And, yeah. I I mean, yeah, the pressure is on. You were leading the table by half a point now, right? Uh, now we hmm. were. I was tied with Maurizzi, but. Practically speaking, I had a, a lower-rated opponent compared to him, who was who was going to face uh, Erwin Lamy. Ah, yeah. so that was much tougher, especially since he has black, and yeah. Erwin is very solid with white. So, yeah, definitely a chance. <laughs> so you were giving Erwin uh, a prep talk to and go like, "Come on, you can do it. <laughs> You're just a really hoping... good player. Remember the game we had." <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was just hoping he would try to put up the same resistance that he did against me. And uh, <laughs> yeah, let's see how this turned out. Yeah. So the last game yeah. uh, against um, Divya Desh Deshmukh. Yeah, is Deshmukh. this correct? How I say this? Yes. Yeah. And yeah, she's also, yeah, 2,400 out of uh, nowhere, she's up with the top Indian uh, women. Yes. Like uh, she's one of the three who were, no, uh, probably Wali and um, Prax's sister, right? Vaishali and Hampi as well. Yes. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Strong, strong women's team. Mm -hmm. Maybe for the Olympiad in Budapest, exactly. uh, we will see a surprise there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so All right. Yeah. So I decided to play E4. Uh, there was a long consideration because of d4 or e4. In the end, I couldn't make up my mind, so I just played e4. <laughs> it went quite well, this tournament. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, let's just go mm -hmm. for it, I guess. And she went c5, which I did not expect because... Uh, She's this, not a Sicilian player? Or? She is, but in this tournament, she had played the Berlin. And usually you play ah. the Berlin for the whole tournament. So you, yeah, you would have tried to... 
uh, win mm. against the Berlin, which is also yeah. not so easy after yeah, all. Yeah, but at least I, got, I get a simple game where I can try and out outplay my opponent, yes. which I usually do decently. Yes. But unfortunately, she played C5, which is <laughs> not in my preparation. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is one of very, very, very few games where you were, your prep wasn't uh, on spot. Yes, right? we so didn't Most the of the games were hmm. very, very well prepared. Yeah. All right. So we entered into this line, which I don't know what's the name. I, if I'm not mistaken, it might be called the, Mar uh, the Four Knights Sicilian. Uh, I call it the Four Knights Sicilian. That is the Four Knights Sicilian. Okay. There, there's some traps in this uh, opening oh, yeah. too. Yeah, <laughs> very <laughs> tricky. Yeah, <laughs> and become popular as well recently. Mm. So this is the main line which I headed into, and Queen C7 still the main move. Although Bishop B7 is another possibility, with the idea to play C5. Yeah, I love this. I mean, e5, yes, of course, mm. very weak, but this dominance on d6. Mm. It's, uh, yeah, there's some games which are having this uh, yeah, motive, and I really like it. I mm. enjoy that. Yeah, I mean, it looks good, but unfortunately, computers exist, and they manage to equalize. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> Otherwise, more yeah. people would play exactly this all the time. Yeah, exactly. So she played queen c7, which is probably the main line, mm -hmm. and f4, queen b6. Still theory. I played c4, very natural, all, all theory as well. Yeah. Here, knight e3 is also possible, which heads into some more craziness. <laughs> but she decided to stick with the main line. No craziness. Well. Mm, yeah. And also, uh, the whole line, you can't avoid crazy in this opening. Crazy is like <laughs> a constant over here. So, king e2, which is bunk cloud basically, but it's theory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I saw, I remember this move and I couldn't believe you actually pulled it off because, yeah, but it's well known yeah, in the yeah, Masters? Or? Exactly. It's done like 500 times before. So. <sighs> Known stuff. <laughs> and she went for f5. Mind blowing. Okay. Yeah, all theory still. Here, knight f2 is considered the main move, but although I played an equally decent move, he takes f6. Here, bishop e3 attacking the queen, queen d8. Yes. And all this is theory, all forced as well. Takes, takes, bishop I don't d7. know, I love this for white. <laughs> yeah, it looks good, except that my king has to go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I and forgot about that, yeah. <laughs> and uh, here, of course, the main move is rook d1, but I chose this other move, king d1, which is very interesting in my opinion. Okay. And she went c5, which is the best move. Sacrificing a pawn and bishop e4. Very strong move and uh, very unexpected, but with engines, we know that it's the best. Mm. Basically, it's, I think, in my opinion, it's kind of stopping bishop d3 and also kind of preventing the king. Although it's very weird to do it at this point. It looks funny, yeah, yeah. but it, is, it makes sense, yeah. Yeah, it's just the computer's best choice. And here, bishop e2. And this is where I kind of left my preparation because. I mean, uh, left. I knew this much you in know, my notes. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't have yeah. <laughs> found king e2 on <laughs> over the board. Maybe, maybe yes. But uh, I mean, it's all known stuff. But I knew that uh, if I get here, at least I can play for a win because things are less forcing over yeah. here. There are not like critical only move lines and then draw. <laughs> it's not like that. I also noticed you have a bishop pair quite often, oh. or was it just like um, <laughs> coincidence? I didn't notice it, but probably yeah, it's, it's like I'm yeah. just noticing. You know, I think it was at least the sixth or seventh time where it is beyond the middle game, almost walking towards an end game, and you have those two minor strong pieces. Yeah, there. that's maybe true. I'm wrong, but yeah. Yeah, maybe I have an inclination. <laughs> <laughs> and here she played d6, and she uh, she was out of preparation because she thought for like 20 minutes or something. Okay. Although rook c8 is also possible, but d6, and I forgot what I had in my notes over here. <laughs> So I was basically on my own as well, and I decided to go uh, queen d4. Although queen a3 was a queen b5 check, but she has king f7, and okay, she's still developing her pieces. Yeah. So queen d4 is the most natural. She went castles. And now I had a big dilemma, because I wanted to play king c1 in the beginning to try and get my king like this. Yes. But then she plays a5. That's not working mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah, very annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly, okay, I can't go there. <laughs> I can't go there. But I should have played King Sam because it's the best move. And uh, I have some resources here as well. I think it was Rook D1 or something. Yeah, Rook D1 probably. And uh, somehow I'm creating some counterplay with my king okay. at least safer. 
I thought if I go to the king side, it's no point because this e5 coming all the time and yeah, e5 if will I, open up the f file. Yeah, if I have a step there, then this would be disastrous. Yeah. So I was just th thinking about all these options. Also, bishop f3 was possible, but somehow I didn't like it. It was too like uh, timid, kind of, and exchanging too many yep. pieces. Although it was one of the best moves, according oh, to the computer. Wow. But I'd, I wanted to keep more complexity. And then I went for this ridiculous move b4, <laughs> which is bad, basically. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. No, not wow. You shouldn't em emulate this. This is bad. Oh, no. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> exactly. I don't know how I came to this conclusion, but I somehow thought b4 was possible. But it's just ridiculous. But, 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 but. First of all, okay, but why is it that ridiculous? So maybe one idea, I, I can see some ideas while you're playing it. First of all, your king can always still go to maybe c3 or b2, mm -hmm. and then there's a3. It stops the queen for going to a4. Five. So there's mm. some points to make for it, but the bad yeah. bad news about it, can you explain? Yeah, basically I'm, I'm just opening the queen side too much and my king would be eternally weak. I see. Okay. No cover. Okay, okay, okay. 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 She played a queen e8, very good move in fact. Although queen mm. d7 is also possible, but queen e8 is probably the best. The idea is to threaten this first of all and also get here, which or, uh, or push e5. Basically, three good ideas. That's only Ooh, the thing. Oh, aha, aha. Covering a yeah. lot, yeah. And now I, <laughs> I had no option but to cover a4 and play a4 myself. And this <laughs> doesn't look too good, does it? <laughs> I, I, why not? It's a queer. Uh -huh. Yeah, for me, I, I, th I like that. But uh, <laughs> I don't think it, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, if you say so, I believe you, right? But uh, I think like uh, I would probably play the same. <laughs> I don't know. No, because if you go king c1 now, already uh, oh not this one. If you go king c1 now, already queen a4 is a problem. Yeah, that's not good. Attacking this and this, and if I go queen c3, even knight d5, and oh, it's yeah, Terrible. it's falling apart. Terrible. Yeah. How was it on the board with Maurizio at that point? I think he, he. I think he had already drawn by this point, because uh, I don't know what happened there, whether they repeated or what. But somehow he had already drawn, and he must have seen my position and said, "Okay, this is <laughs> 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 good chances." That'll do. Yeah. <laughs> I was definitely worried myself. Because and then uh, all of a sudden, Darda was also part of the leading trio, right? Yes. Yes. And how was he doing? I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he. He was on nine. I think I don't know whether he finished his game or not. But if I had run this game, I would be on the same points with him. Oh, okay. And then we have to depend on tie break and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but basically, I had to win to avoid how, all these complications. How confident would you have been for tie break stuff, shenanigans? But uh, there would not tie break like uh, Buchholz tie break. There wouldn't be a playoff. Oh, tie break, there was yeah. no playoff in the challengers. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Okay. So I have no idea how to calculate well, all yeah, that. Well, then you just uh, yeah. And also, I expected myself to win this game and uh, not hold. But yeah. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> So I played a4 in the end, which I, once I've played b5, I have to go for it. So she played e5. Very natural, just opening up the center. Yeah. Good move. Yeah. And if I take now, she just takes and all of a sudden this rook d8 will become very, very annoying. Yeah. And something like queen g6 and, oops, queen g6 and, okay, my position is not too good, at least, to say the least. Mm -hmm. But I went queen d2 to keep the d file closed. She traded. And took this free pawn on g2. Yeah, that looks very open, to be honest. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was not good at all. No. And those three pawns on a, b, and c, they go like, why, why did you do that? What happened here? <laughs> yeah. I, for some reason, I thought I was ready to queen the pawn, but that yeah. was ridiculous. <laughs> you already took the white queen, <laughs> psychologically, <it's not> like <laughs> yeah. after before, like, so you don't mind, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I played rook g1, and she played knight e4, of course. That was the whole point of taking this pawn, oh. to uh, threaten this and also open the rook. So what happens after queen check on d5? And that's what I played. Yeah. So I'll get to that. Okay. But before that, there was another option of queen e3, which looks good, until this happens. <sighs> like, ah. <laughs> Not good at all. What is happening? Wait, you take, check, take, 
check. Um, ah, thank you. Yeah, I, I see it. Yeah. King here. Oh, uh, wait, was it here? Here. And I'll tell you the line originally that I saw. If you take here, which looks good, yeah, pin attacking this and this, I suddenly have this option of playing here. Take the rooks, right? Yeah. And then here. And suddenly you can't move the bishop because of checkmate. Okay. And in, there's no check for black. I just see yes. that. Mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> but this is only equal. And I knew that she's strong enough to at least hold this. Anyway. Yes. But then I was already almost going to go for it because I know that I'm worse. But yeah. then I even noticed that over here she can take with the queen. I take. Oh, gosh. And then rook f8. And oh, snap. <laughs> Rook f3 is coming next, and I don't expect to survive this one. That's, yeah, no, that's over. That yeah. cannot win. Yes. So I have no option but to play check. King here. But now I can't take the bishop. That's the whole point. Yeah, I see it now. Disaster. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I had anticipated this and planned to play king c2, which is maybe the only way to keep the game going. Nice. And luckily, there are no shenanigans with the knight move because I take the bishop. Yeah. Now, I was thinking here, her best move is to take, right? I take back. And now, basically, she, okay, let's evaluate here. Yeah. Uh, she has a safe king, an attack with active pieces, while I have a weak king <laughs> with clumsily placed pieces. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my only good resource is that in an endgame, I'm probably winning due to my far advanced pawns. But mm -hmm. endgame is not going to happen anytime soon. And base, that, that probably should mean that I'm in a very dangerous situation, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. And I saw a couple of options for her. One of them was a5 to try and get the square for the c5 knight or uh, some other moves. But then I noticed she has a very strong move, knight f2, hmm. which somehow is oh, just too gosh. strong attacking this bishop. Yes. And if you think about it, suddenly it's not easy to defend that bishop. Not at all. If I go here, whoops a daisy. Oh. So, and you, okay, I, I can't think of honestly a decent move. Maybe I have to go back, but this is already not too good, yeah? King going to d2 is... King going to d2... Hmm. There must be something. Give maybe me a second. Maybe it's decent. <laughs> no, maybe it's decent, but uh, okay. You know, I'm least. almost thinking about queen takes e2, but uh, and rook <laughs> e, e8 check, uh -huh. and then... Because those pawns, out of a sudden, mm -hmm. are like a wall against you. <laughs> but it's yeah. not, I don't think it's working. But also you don't need to sacrifice because, yeah, for example, not. a nice move would be rook b8 probably, just attacking the pawn yeah. and provoking it to move. And once, if I move, then at least she can give check and go here or something like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's I'm terrible. still okay. weak king, basically. Okay. So I saw this for her and I was, uh, okay, I basically knew it's bad. But she went for another option, knight f2. Very interesting. Attacking my queen, you can say. Yeah. But uh, once I take... And the bishop on e2. Yes. Of course, she could have transposed to the line I showed you just now with yeah. takes. But her, her idea was this, of course, which looked good. I mean, why not? I defend. And here is what... Uh, here we she started thinking. But in my mind, I thought the most natural move was... Let me just enter variation. Most natural move was... Uh, Rook a c8, attacking the pawn, right? Yeah. I have no option but to try and create counterplay, so I go here. Now, if she goes into an endgame, as I said earlier, the endgames are good for me. I'm, I'm not getting checkmated, to say the least. <laughs> so she should take with the rook. Then I thought if I uh, go king b3, there is rook f3 check, so I can't go there. Oh, if God. I go king b2, there is rook takes b4 with a pin, so I can't do that. What's left? So king b1. <laughs> okay. And here, she can just play this, for example. Trade the queens. And she's a pawn up with oh. a good, decent attack as well. And I evaluated mm. this as bad, but should be survivable, at least, yeah? Mm -hmm. But then when I started thinking, when she was still thinking, I decided to look at the variation again. It's like, wait a minute. In this scenario... If I go here, she checks. I go here. Check. Oh, God. I go here. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't happening. calculate this. And I said, wait a minute. Like, she has four pieces, oh, but nothing is happening. Gosh. And, and what am I threatening? I'm threatening the queen. 
But more importantly, I'm yeah, checkmate. I, I ate it's a very nice checkmate. And this is when I realized that she literally has no option in this scenario, in this position. And that I, that I set a trap without knowing it. <laughs> Goodness. This was the most fortunate thing. And that is so crazy. It was basically here that the camera people started coming and taking <laughs> pictures. And I said, maybe this line actually works. I'm not seeing ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and funny. In the end, she played rook a c8. I played rook a1. She took. And after king b3, she started thinking for like 20, 25 minutes and then just resigned because there's nothing. What? Yeah. That was the craziest thing ever. Oh, my goodness. I did the most ridiculous things and survived. It was, it was fortunate, <laughs> I could say. <laughs> but, uh, luck is 100% a part of almost any tournament after all because yeah. Um, yeah for sometimes there's just one tiny little move and a certain mood or a certain idea or a certain feeling leads to that whatever it is and mm. then things can completely turn around mm. nice my goodness what a marathon but a beautiful marathon though yeah. um, I, I really truly enjoyed all of this a couple of post thoughts so mm -hmm. you won against uh, Divya, did you do like something <laughs> like this or were you just like or just or were you calm and motionless? I mean you're 17 after all right yeah, <laughs> yeah. so yeah you're <laughs> no I was mostly just pissed off that I managed to get into such a situation <laughs> <laughs> because this is just Damn. ridiculous yeah. <laughs> getting a losing uh. position with white soon after the opening like this b4 and all was nonsense basically so I was not too happy but yeah also happy that it turned out well in the end. So let me say one thing, because of course this happens for every chess player in the whole world. For the be Carlsen has been in situations like this so many times. It's mm -hmm. not like that Carlsen is always dominating from the beginning to the end. Most of the times, yes. Mm -hmm. But there's often enough positions with Carlsen where he's like, there, he, the, the bar is a bit lower or even much lower. And then mm -hmm. he's proving that he's Marcus Carlsen by turning everything around. This mm -hmm. is why he's so feared. And um, uh, apparently, this is uh, what you have mm -hmm. done with uh, most of your games as well. You have yeah. just flipped them around by just being constant, defending very well, going for the attack, not fearing, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, then exploding with all of this. Mm. And then a uh, couple of hours later, the same day, there was a cer ceremony. Yeah. So you received the, uh, the yeah. Challenger's Cup. Yeah, it's very heavy, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can probably do weightlifting. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> and it is, uh, that is yours now. So you have it uh, in your, one of your trophy mm -hmm. uh, cupboards yes. or something like that. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. What uh, an amazing tournament. What amazing game. Yeah, the games are just fascinating. We have them all listed for you in the chess space article of course take a look at them study them well because uh, there has been a lot of effort gone into those games after all you've prepared well for them uh, we have some french examples some italian examples and um yeah yeah fascinating so next year it's going to be vike and the masters yeah maybe mr carlson will be there too let's <laughs> hope uh, and and then uh, yeah we have all <laughs> we have this all over again against mm. another uh, bunch of 2700 <laughs> yeah <laughs> opponents yes, of course yeah so um yeah i can't wait to cover this then i mm. hope i i will i have the chance for that then mm -hmm. leon thank you so so much for for doing all of this it's a lot that we could have learned i learned a lot too it was super exciting mm. thank you very much yeah all the best for the future Thank you. Thank you for having me here.